It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul and Mary Jo are here. We're going to talk about the Amazon phone. The announcement just happened. Uh, we'll get their thoughts. We'll also talk about updates to Windows Phone 8.1 and the Surface Pro 3. It's about to come out, and there's still a major flaw. Will Microsoft have time to fix it? Find out next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 367, recorded June 18th, 2014. Mucho Calibre. Windows Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Are you looking to upgrade your IT skills or prepare for certification? IT Pro TV offers engaging and informative tutorials. Stream to your Roku, computer, or mobile device for 30% off the lifetime of your account. Go to itpro.tv slash WW and use the code WW30. And by... Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and use the offer code WINDOWS. And by Citrix ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with Citrix ShareFile. Try it today for a 30-day free trial. Go to sharefile.com, click the microphone, and enter Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show. I'm sorry, I got to do the quiet version. Take two. <laughs> Don't want to wake anybody up. Windows Weekly on the air. Paul Therat is here. That doesn't rhyme. I was trying to I rhyme. I like the Suffolk, Suffolk Downs intro. <laughs> You know, Let's get fast around the races. And and around the <laughs> <laughs> Paul Thorat from the Super Site for Windows, WindsuperSite.com. Mary Jo Foley also here from the uh, ZDNet blog, all about Microsoft.com. And I apologize for the late start on the show today, kids, but uh, Amazon, actually, Adobe had an announcement today. A little later on, there's going to be a, a T Mobile concert from uh, Macklemore. In uh, Seattle. The <laughs> I don't know what the Adobe announcement was. Something like, uh, we're going to give you star ratings in Lightroom for the iPad. <sighs> and Amazon had a little event up there in Seattle, um, and uh, they announced a new phone. The, one, the question that I have that's actually for you guys, they showed a Maps program. It's clearly not Google Maps. Because right. uh, they don't have Google services on this, it looked like I'm. I was. It's either. It's got to be either Bing Maps or Here Maps. Is there? First of all, Bing uses Here. Is that right or no? Yeah, it does. It's a very yeah. complicated question. <laughs> when when uh, Microsoft bought Nokia Mobility, they acquired not the mapping technology, but a license to the mapping technology. Yes. A is that exclusive? I no. Don't think it oh is. no no. It's yeah. not. It is. Yep. It is no, uh, it exclusive is not, license. As as no, no, no. So it could no. be. It could very well be that Amazon would have acquired a license. In fact, if I were Amazon, I, uh, I'm not sure what the price would be, but that would be the best possible I, choice for that. It's clearly, the logical choice. Yeah. 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 Because Google yeah, would have required them to do the full Google experience. You can't just license Maps. I bet. Or oh, guarantee Amazon. you not. You'd have to do yeah. a. Uh, an Android handset, and that's exactly what this is not. It's based on Android, but it's Fire OS. I bet this is here, uh, Maps. Yeah, in the Be Benedict Evans is saying on his tw Twitter stream, yes, it's here, he's saying. Well, that's good. I like here. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like they've got their own presentation maybe on top of it. Yeah, that's why it's confusing. Uh, which, it's hard to tell. Yeah. I, I. Well, I mean, but that would be how you differentiate, I guess. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Simon Bisson is saying Amazon has been a here licensee for a long time. Ah. Okay. Interesting. He's one of our colleagues, blogging colleagues. All right. So that's They really don't maps. call it out on this page at all. I mean, no. it mentions maps. No, but it no just, Amazon doesn't, yeah. uh, in this announcement, didn't want to mention anybody else except AT&T, their <laughs> carrier yeah, partner, yeah. obviously, and, and, the, and the massive Amazon store. And, of course, uh, they didn't want to mention Best Buy because basically... You bring this phone into a Best Buy, take a picture of your stuff, and you can see how much cheaper it is online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm and surprised this thing isn't basically a retail scanning wand. You know, it, 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 it has a yeah. dedicated button. Yeah. Yep. There you go. 
You walk in the door, you push the button. The guy, you know, you know, nobody's gonna let any more phones in their stores ever. ever again. <laughs> It'll this be like wearing evil. Google Glass in a bar. It'll be like, nope, sorry, do you have the Amazon phone? Yeah. You can't come in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I know this is Windows Weekly, so we won't spend a lot of time talking about it. Well, but we can make a couple of comparisons. Um, mm -hmm. They were really pushing the camera. Uh, 13 megapixels OIS F2. It's a very good, spec-wise, very good Didn't camera. compare it to any Lumia phones, though, which nope. I thought was an interesting <laughs> way for them to yeah. continue ignoring Oh, that's a good point. Phone, I do not appreciate yeah. they had They had three photos, a Samsung Galaxy S5 and an iPhone 5S, and they yeah. showed how much better, both of which, by the way, were taking pictures of dark cityscapes, and they were saying, look well, how much better I, our be phones. To be fair, both of those cameras, all, uh, phones also take great pictures. Right. Um, so if it takes better pictures than those cameras, it's in the 90th you know, percentile. Or but whatever. Nokia is still the king of the king of the room, I right? would imagine they are. I mean, yeah. I, I can't, yeah. 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 Does have a dedicated hardware uh, button for the camera. That's nice. Same feature as Nokia where you... Push the button once, it, it unlocks, you know, opens up the camera app and push it again, takes a picture. And uh, they say very quick, one second uh, to... Uh, pocket to picture, pocket call to it. Pi pocket to picture. Yeah. Pocket to pocket. Yeah. yeah. It's actually a Windows phone feature, so other, other phones... It is. Have that as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was saying before the show started, this kind of reminded me in some crazy ways of the Nokia X phone because it's an Android phone that doesn't run Google apps and services. Right. Yeah. What do we, what do we call that? Like AOSP? Is that yeah. the term? Yeah. So, so you have, you, the, the licensing is weird, but you have the Open Handset Alliance. You right. have the open source AOSP. But if you want the Google services on top of that, you have to get it certified by Google as part of the Open Handset Alliance, and then but, you can install Play Store and and must, by the way, not can, but must install Play Store, Google Maps. Uh, okay. Does it prevent you from installing your own store? No. Because in, in fact, you, know, you can okay, download so, on any Android device. You can download the Amazon App Store now. Yes, um, but what I don't understand is uh, there there are many benefits to the Google apps and services, right? So. Other app makers, Samsung, HTC, whatever, modify uh, Android, the full Android, right, and still have that stuff. No, I you mean, can. You just have to get it certified to do that. Amazon yeah. doesn't want to do it. Amazon is making its own. Uh, well, in fact, before the show began, I made the point, and I think this is maybe the most important takeaway, is that there is now uh, a fourth uh, mobile OS. You've got Windows Phone. You've got iPhone, iOS. You've got Android. As as right. done officially by Google and others, you've got BlackBerry. I guess it's a fifth OS, and and now I think you can safely say Fire OS is not merely a. It's not like TouchWiz yeah. on yeah, top yeah, yeah. of Android. Yeah. It is its own OS. It's its own thing. Yeah, no, that's fair. They've yep. they've completely forked it, mm -hmm. and that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's good. So That's know. good. It's I, com competition. I think it's a great thing. And I think what Amazon's done in great, in, 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 as opposed to Microsoft, you know, Microsoft struggles because they enter the market late. Amazon has entered the market even later. But what yeah, they've been doing is thing, laying right? the groundwork for it all along. Right. Yeah. I, two years ago, this phone would have been... I don't want to say no brainer, but it would have been a big, big deal. And today, I it's just I have questions, but it looks nice and it looks high quality. Um, I have issues, you know. It, this is something anyone can do is you know compare the apps that are available between the different stores. And if you look just at Microsoft apps, for example, um, the selection of Android apps that Microsoft makes is pretty amazing. The selection you can get through the Amazon store is not so amazing. Ah, uh, that's interesting. So there is no yeah, and, uh, and that office can change, you know, for uh, yeah. Fire OS, right? Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So far. So far. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm sure Microsoft, like others, is waiting to see. Like, well, yeah. how big will this yeah. be? The phone doesn't come out for another five weeks. They have to get FCC approval. So they're saying July 25th. Right, right. And it is U.S. only. So it doesn't really compete with the X or any other phones because it's, you know. Well, this is how things start. I mean, I, I people get burned by that in other countries. Um, which well, you still can't get the Kindle in, in most places. Oh, really? Fire. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, Amazon's well, kind of a U.S. Very By the way, I'm phone. looking in their store. There are exactly five Microsoft apps uh, for this phone. OneNote's one of them. And two of them are smart glass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, OneDrive, uh, Ornament, Bing Search. Interesting. Not Note? OneNote? 
No, I mean, it, it's possible it's actually in here. I mean, um, sometimes they don't come up on the manufacturer name. And no, I don't see it. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's a little weird from that perspective. By the way, Amazon is using here maps. Okay. Um, yep. And uh, this is on the, uh, this is actually an Amazon's privacy and security notice. Um, so they are using here maps yep. on this. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, but this is not an Amazon show, so I, and we have <laughs> been spending the last hour and a half talking about it. So. But I okay. just, you know, there are some things to say in in, in related sure. to uh, Windows. We're as confused as anyone else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just, I think it's going to be very, it's very interesting that there is now another platform. I mean, this this is a first class yeah. platform. I think um, uh, it's not it's not a derivative of Android, but it's its own thing. It is technically. I was, I, I was surprised there wasn't more three D ishness to this announcement. I mean, they did show and talk right. about the three D capabilities, but everybody was so pegging this as a three D phone, and that's the big feature. And it, well, that was their it's ad, there. or their the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they got yeah. it wrong. It's not three it. D. It's, it's Amazon not. calls it dynamic perspective. It's very yeah. different from three D. It is. It is. It looks more applied, like something that actually has a purpose instead of just the yeah, coolness factor. Yeah, it's not just a gimmick, although it's right. a little gimmicky. Oh, it's a bit yeah. of a gimmick. Yeah. But, it is, yeah. but but less gimmicky than I expected. I was like, wow, who is going to want 3D apps on their it, phone? But not, actually, it's yeah, more... Yeah, it's not coming up out of the phone, right? It's no, not what, no. we, what we often think of as 3D. No, 3D, um, you know, you can say 3D requires is tricking your eyes. Uh, sending two different images, one into each eye, to give you the illusion of three dimensions. This isn't that at all. This is kind of what Apple's already done on the iOS 7, which is to add kind of a perspective. I, I, I mentioned that today in an article. Uh, you know, it's funny because the, they're opposites, right? The uh, Apple approach is like uh, accelerometer, basically. It's based right. on the movement of the device, whereas the Amazon one is based on the movement of your head. And it has to do with the cameras that are, you know, sensing your position. Four so cameras on the front in the four corners. Yeah. Sensing not merely where your head is, but how far away from the phone it is. And I think we may see more, depending on whether developers jump on this or not, but that, that could, there's, there could be other uses for that that are yeah. intriguing. You know, you don't, you don't see this a lot on Windows Phone, um, or, or maybe I just forget to use it, but you know, you can actually uh, shake your Windows Phone to do an undo. Mm -hmm. Huh. So like yeah. a feature. <laughs> You know, if you shake your iPhone, it says you would, or no, your Android phone, it says, would you like to report this bug to Google? Because I, I it, the assumption is you're shaking your phone in anger. Right. <laughs> there was a guy in New Zealand a couple of years ago. I was sitting across from him at a bar, and I saw him shake his phone. And he looked at it. And he shook it again. He looked at it. Did it again, and I said, I, I, I looked over him and I said, "Does it run faster when you do that?" <laughs> what, was, <laughs> what, are you what are you doing to your phone? What's he doing? What's he doing? Yeah, but you know, uh, we've been talking on the show before about Microsoft supposedly coming out with some three D stuff for Windows Phone, mm -hmm. right? And theirs is more like the hovering. You hover your finger over, and different things are going to happen with the live tiles and like a proximity. So that's an yet another way to approach three D, quote unquote three D. That's coming supposedly in the first update to Windows Phone 8.1 from all right. we've read, heard. So that's, you know, it just shows everybody's kind of bringing their own take to what is, is in a very broad sense 3D. Well, it also shows that phones are kind of going their own direction. I mean, that, mm -hmm. these are some features that I don't think you're going to see a lot of Me Too uh, perspective, you know, or May Day. They're yeah. going to put a help button on the Amazon phone or... You know, a lot of these features, I don't, I don't see people doing it as a me too. They're just going, yeah, well, there goes Amazon. Right. Yeah. Do you think we'll see that? I mean, that Windows Phone and certainly Apple's promoting its ecosystem. Google's promoting its ecosystem. Amazon's very much promoting its ecosystem. Will Microsoft do the same? Hmm. They do in software. I mean, if yeah, you, if you use software. Office, you should have a Windows Phone. Well, increasingly that's not changing, so much. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. It, it is. It's that's an interesting difference because Microsoft more and more is becoming a cross-platform ah, company. Interesting. You yeah. know, right. like you're getting Office on all platforms. You're getting OneDrive for everything and Skype for everything. Yeah. It's not like they're trying to lock you into their wall garden. They're actually making their garden available to every every homeowner mm, or phone. Yeah, mm, and that's that's a big change actually for Microsoft. Yeah, you know, it is. Obviously, that isn't the way it was uh, for a long, long time. So. I, I think that's just a realization that the market has kind of moved on and that the uh, mobile devices, particularly in the smartphone world, are 
predominantly other platforms, you know, so you can just sort of, uh, you know, stick your fingers in your and pretending it's not happened, but it has happened. And I think that's reflecting that. All right, well, let's talk about Windows Phone 8.1 Update 1. Or yeah. some. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Isn't there such a thing? Am I making that yeah. up? That's the very first thing. No. Am I hallucinating? No. no. It's coming. It's coming supposedly around, what, what, when have we heard? Um, sometime soon. That's, yeah. I think that's all we've heard. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, yeah. the way Windows Phone updates roll out, it's the, it kind of happens. And then yeah. it hits phones months, months later. And I think the, one of the neat things that happened with the initial release of Windows 8.1, and I hope it happens with the updates, is that people on that developer program were able to get it really early. And we've just never had that kind of access before, so it's cool. And uh, if that thing does happen this summer or late this summer, fall, whatever, um, you know, hopefully we'll have that same kind of access. I got, I got a new update pushed a couple of days ago to the 1520 with update one. What it, yeah, and what is that? That's... No, so that's Windows 8.1, right? So that is the third of the post-RTM updates that Microsoft has delivered so far. Okay, so that's uh, not update one for... It's just No, it's it's <laughs> post-RTM 8.1. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. But it will be something, of course, when you get 8.1 on your phone. Are people getting yeah, that so yet? Yeah, so sometime this... What, your phone's... Oh, your phone's unlocked, right? Yeah, I did that whole thing that you suggested. I joined the developer program. No, I know, but where did you get the phone? It was, yeah, it's an unlocked... Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a... Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's not clear when you'll get it, but it, at some point this summer, whenever whenever the unlocked phones get the update, uh, when they get the 8.1 release. I mean, you'll get an 8.1 release that is basically just the firmware updates that Nokia slash Microsoft has provided. Right. Uh, and actually, that might be it, right? Because you don't have any carry software. I don't have any carry. About, so, you know, in fact, it's so, did, it's so unlocked, which is great. I, I decided to take the T-Mobile SIM out of my Moto X and put it. No, I'm sorry. I mm -hmm. had the T-Mobile SIM in it. I took that out and put it in the Moto X. I put the AT&T SIM in the Nokia 1520. And it all just kind of works. It's nice. Yeah. Yep. It's now an AT&T phone. But I won't get AT&T carrier stuff. You, right, which right. is, by the way, absolutely fine. <laughs> you don't want any of that. Ralph De La Vega is not going to come to my house and bug me. <laughs> well. uh, yeah. All right. So, Micromax. Right. What is a Micromax? <laughs> is it big? Is it little? I've heard of Microsoft. <clears throat> so, uh, well, I mean, last week we talked about some of the, uh, what was it, like the Yez Billy phone and, Billy, and some yeah. of the stuff. And these so this is yet another. Eight one phones. Yeah, these are a couple of phones from a company called Micromax. I've never heard of them. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, Ooh, I, I like uh, the Fist logo on the back. $110, $160. Um, they're heading to India, so it's you know we're oh, not going right. to see them here, uh, at least not right away. They look like they're pretty decent phones. There's a low end version, you know, W uh, what is it, WVGA or WXGA? Those you know, eight eight hundred by four eighty, uh, low res display. And then a five-inch version with a 720p display, I believe. But it's got an actual, I guess it's actual leather back with that kind of what? stitching effect you see on some oh, that's cool. Samsung products. If you look at the top of the photo on the right, you can see that kind of stitching effect, which I personally actually really like. Yeah. Um, some people don't like that. but And that's not pleather. That's, that's dead supposedly cow. Supposedly it's leather. It says leather stitching. That's Maybe not going to sell well pack. in India, I think. <laughs> isn't, <laughs> that, isn't that a place where they don't like, they like the cows? They want to keep yeah, them around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> hmm. I can't make up these press releases. Like <laughs> <laughs> can't. <laughs> uh, but so, but the logo is a fist. It looks like, or a fist. Yeah. Like, around a phone, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's punching the cow right in the face, so you can get that. <laughs> Take that, stitch. you sacred cow! <laughs> right. hey, you got your sacred cow right here. <laughs> um, cyan. It's not just yeah. a color. No. It is not. It's also the name for that firmware update that's coming with Windows Phone 8.1. And uh, there was a Reddit AMA where some of the Nokia camera folks came on and they said, here's some of the stuff you're going to get in Cyan. They talked about, um, with, and, they, and they made it very specific to the camera. They said better colors, um, continuous autofocus, better video quality, much better low light performance. And all of these things are going to be part of that first firmware update that comes to you when you get Windows Phone 8.1 pushed out to you. You'll get, if you have a Lumia 1520, uh, the 930 or the Icon, you'll, all get, you'll get all of these. The other phones are also going to get firmware updates too, but they may not get the same set of uh, enhancements for the camera. 
I'm not sure. Yeah, probably a subset. Probably a subset, yeah. Yeah, so we know uh, the we we know that sometime very soon, we think starting in the next couple of weeks, people are going to start seeing this the Windows Phone eight one and the firmware updates get pushed to them from their carriers. So it should be starting to happen fairly soon. Uh, it's already coming out on some of the new phones uh, preloaded, and you'll get some right. updates too. So yeah, actually, does your six thirty have cyan on it? It must. Um, I. You know what? I haven't even checked. I bet it does. Well, how would you, you find know, out? It actually, it does say it. It's in, I think it's in the about screen. Let me see. Does it, it say the word cyan or is it by number? Yeah, well, it will. You're right. Yeah, it will. Um, it, yeah. On older versions, you know, it would say black or whatever. Uh, let me see if I can quickly figure out where you would go. Is it in about? Uh, no, 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 no. So I'm not sure. Maybe someone in the chat knows exactly where to look but there is a yeah, place I don't to have find my this. phone handy it's not here but extras and info maybe yeah I'm okay yeah there's a there's a settings app called extras and info and on my phone it says lumia black ah cool mm. it gives you the name of the software release i don't have my 1520 with me so i can't check yeah. Yeah. uh but that's a firmware update that's not a software mm. update Right. right. Well, it impacts things throughout the phone. The firmware is funny with a Surface too, right? It's a little weird. Like uh, some of the stuff is drivers, which is clearly software. It interacts right. with the hardware. I mean, obviously we get that. But I, don't, I often think these firmware updates aren't strictly firmware as we sort of think about it um, with, with computers. But yeah, it's maybe software that interacts with hardware is the way to describe it. You know, somebody should write a Windows Phone 81 field guide just to kind of I explain agree. <laughs> what all this is, how it works. Why don't, why don't you well, write I'm that, a, Paul? Why you I'm a you sap. <laughs> <laughs> why why you do know, you say I, that, Paul? I'll I mean, tell you why. You're and writing another book? Most... Don't tell me that. <laughs> I thought this was going to be like an easy update to the Windows 8 book, the Windows Phone 8 book. And then I started actually kind of filling in where all the changes would go and what they were. And it's like clearly a... This is a much bigger release than the 8.1 number would suggest, which I knew, obviously. But I kind of thought this was going to be a quickie couple months. And it's not. It's not going to be quick. So hmm. I'm an idiot. Hey, at least it has a swell graphic. It does yes. have a goal. That's like courtesy of uh, Martin Jones, McLean. The... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You need, a, you need a fedora. I have a picture of me with a fedora. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Just to give you an idea, we're at book 0 0.1. Yeah, we got a ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get it. That. It's free in, in PDF, Mobi, or EPUB. Yep. Now, actually, we were talking about this on Mac Break on uh, mm -hmm. Tuesday. Um, the idea of publishing, you know, an ebook in the, those are the key three formats, I think, PDF, Mobi, and EPUB. Yep. Yep. What is your workflow? Because we, we were, Serenity oh Caldwell God. has a whole talk about this. And, uh, you know. Oh, for converting and so forth? Yeah, you start in Word, um, I presume, yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything's written in Word. Um, I use Word to convert to PDF, which may or not, may not be efficient from a file size perspective. I, I have not examined other yeah, no ways of doing it. In There's fact, I just want to be really clear. on the internet. That's not a problem. I, I want to write the book and not worry about this yeah. other stuff on the right. side. So right. I, I spend as little time as possible on that and, you know, my time on this. But. Um, for converting from Word doc to Mobi and uh, EPUB, I use a tool called, let me bring it up. It's free. Um, Cal Calibre? Caliber, yeah. Caliber. Yeah, that's what Calibre, she uses, as I call it. Calibre. <laughs> well, Calibre. It could be Calibre. It Hola, could be Calibre. Calibre. No one has ever really said um, it out loud before, so you're the first. <laughs> you get to choose. Uh, it's it works fine. No, Calibre is you know, cool. It, it, yeah, and it's yeah, free. Yeah, yeah. I think it's open source. I, I I can say from going through the publishing process at Amazon or whatever that uh, if you use their tools, you can arrive at a file size that's smaller. You know, I know that to be a fact. But um, you know, I'm, I'm try, like I said, I'm just trying to get it out. So it works fine. One one step is the key. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, by the way, reporting in Dexter from I'm sorry, uh, Web eighty five forty four from Denmark. His Nokia 630 is running Lumia Cyan Ooh. Okay. in Denmark. Did he say what color? It says like the 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 words Lumia Cyan are a color. Do you like the the black bitter, one? Is like orange. bittersweet shimmer. Yeah. Oh, you mean the, the words themselves are in color? Yeah, like in that app, they're going to be like a color. 
So uh, 8544, what color are the words Lumia Cyan? Is that important? Yeah, to me it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my way of saying no, not really. <laughs> Only but to me is what you're saying. All right. Well, uh, he hasn't reported back, but as soon as he does, I shall... I shall let you know. Actually, I guess it's kind of a red color. Well, I, I can show you. <laughs> it's uh, it's reddish. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yep. pink. Yeah. That's Lumia Black. Uh, Eighty-five yep. fifty-four says it's cyan. Yes. Which is a <laughs> blue, awesome. right? Right. Yeah. It's good. The, uh, yeah. Smart. Very exciting. I can see why they didn't make it black because you wouldn't be able to read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <agree. laughs> Those engineers over no care. They're thinking. You know, they probably thinking. tried black. Yeah. Brought it to the focus group. If only you could tilt the phone in a certain way and yeah. have it be like a 3D effect. Um, hey, Cortana. There is is there actually speculation that they might move it to other to Android and iOS? Yes, and they That's are the ones who are the source of the really? speculation. <laughs> really? Yep. So I we saw just your talked article. about cross-platform, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be something that happens right away. Uh, in fact, they are just saying uh, they haven't even really planned it at all. But they are kind of opening the door to say, hey, you know what? Maybe, we're, maybe we will bring Cortana wow. to other platforms. They didn't give a timetable. They didn't say they're definitively doing it. In fact, they said... The priority first is to make sure when a Cortana on Windows Phone is the best and get it going in other countries and all that. But they definitely opened the door for this to come to other platforms, or at least the possibility of it to be considered. That is really what we were talking about at the beginning, Microsoft seeing yep. itself not as a hardware company or, or even a platform company, but as a, yeah. as a software and services company. Yep. Right. I mean, there's two problems with this, though. I mean, one, one if this strategy fails... Um, Microsoft. You have it, no differentiators Microsoft at all. Is. Well, yeah, and it's you've also created back. this situation where you've kind of thrown yourself on your own sword. You yeah. know. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you live in a, a country where Cortana is not supported now, and you have a Windows Phone device, and you've heard that they are now considering putting it on other devices, that's not good news. You know. Yeah. They. You know. It, uh, to be fair, they when they talked about it, they did say, and nobody reported this. They did say the first priority is getting Cortana on Windows <laughs> phones internationally. Okay. So they, they need did to be make really that clear about that kind of thing. Yeah, they do. They do. But I, I think they were clear about that. And, you know, everybody just wanted to jump onto the, wow, they're going to put Cortana on Android and iOS. Crazy. Well, the issue really isn't software. I'm sure they're developing the software. The issue is server capacity, yeah. right? Right. And how much access do they have to the phones? Like with Windows Phone, they can integrate it very deeply. Right. On an iPhone, no. Not so much. Right. So. That's Google's had that problem. Google's brought yeah. Google's voice services to an iPhone, but you have to launch a Google app and do it all within... Uh, the yeah. app. Now, I don't think they'll have the same problem on uh, Android. I think Android lets you, you mm -hmm. go hog same. wild. Do whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> <laughs> Android is so awesome. <laughs> we don't <laughs> care. <laughs> have at it. Yeah. Yeah. But that, you know, it's a double-edged sword again because which which way should you go? If you're a Windows fan and a Windows Phone early adopter, you're like, no, I don't want you to bring Cortana to other platforms. And Microsoft says, right. well, you know, maybe that's the way we get more people into our ecosystem. We hook them with Cortana is, and get them to use OneNote. Why and would it? Wait, so why would an early do. Adapt, I mean, adopter uh, office, care? Yeah. Oh, they care. They're they're like in a full-on attack mode about this. Like they this, don't want to hear that like Cortana. This is ours. This is mine. Yeah, this is ours. Yep. Hmm, that's interesting. Yep. Yep. Hmm. Well, it would be like well, if Apple said, family. "We're going to put Siri on Windows Phone." Why would I, I, care? I don't know how many. I don't know if if Apple users would care um, or Maybe be incensed by just, that. It doesn't seem like that impacts you in a bad way. I, I guess if it redu if it hurt the quality of service or something, but no, but that's not the same situation. If no. if my, if Apple announced that, uh, iPhone users would laugh. I mean, the, the, the reason it's a problem on Windows Phone is because it isn't everywhere. Right. Yeah. And Windows Phone is struggling, and we need a differentiator, and why would you undercut one of its best new features? I mean, the, you know, it's a, it's a different situation. Yeah. I understand. I really do. All right, a little whoopsie. China gave up uh, something. Woo, woo. Something Microsoft's been keeping secret for a while. We'll talk about that in a second. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, Windows Weekly. But first, a nod, a tip of the hat to those great guys, Tim and Don over there at uh, 
IT Pro TV. IT Pro is all about making it easy for you to get the skills you need to get to upgrade, to get a better job, or to get the certifications. And in many areas, too. I mean, look look at the course library at itpro.tv slash www. You'll see they've got classes in CompTIA, the A+, Net+, Security+. They've got CASP, Strata. They're going to have Linux classes a little later on this month, which is fabulous for CompTIA. The Microsoft Certs, too. Sure, MCSA, MCSE. Actually, they don't have MCSE yet. I thought that MCSE was done. But anyway, they're going to do some MCSE server infrastructure stuff uh, in the third quarter. Cisco. These new security certs, the ISC squared certs, the uh, SSCP and the CISSP. Adam Gordon's teaching those. Those are awesome. Courses cover everything. Network security, PC support, VLANs, subnetting. And they're live as well as uh, downloadable. So this is beautiful. You can go watch the live show, the live stream. There's a chat room just like ours. In fact, Don and Tim freely admit they pretty much copied what we, <laughs> what we did at Screensavers on Tech TV and what we're doing today at Twit. They said it's great. And I think it's fabulous because... You know, they're covering a much more geeky subset of the information we cover. This is this is really designed to supplement. It's, you know, comparable to the cost of a study guide, a lot cheaper than going to an IT school. And you get such great stuff. Direct interaction with the host via live chat. There's web-based Q&A specific to study topics. In fact, they break up all their videos into the actual questions, the pages, the chapters in the test so you know exactly what you're studying for you can you can hone you know drill down on the stuff you really need help with they also give you a virtual machine sandbox lab environment so you can play with the server play with clients you don't have to have any of this equipment they set it up all for you you can do it online i've used it it's fast and it's easy and it's great and you don't have to worry about screwing up something because you just whoops <laughs> you quit which i did immediately you quit and start over they with your uh, subscription you get the measure up Practice exams, that's worth 79 bucks. If you're an annual subscriber, you can download episodes, video or audio, only MP3s, so you can listen on the plane, listen wherever you are. Corporate accounts are also available for departments and companies. IT Pro TV. They take the pain out of learning. An easy, entertaining approach to online IT training, and I love it. They're great guys. They gave me this giant IT Pro TV mug <laughs> it pro tv loves twit well we love it pro tv and in fact we've arranged a special deal just for you if you want to take a look at it pro tv you can go to the site right now it pro tv slash ww and you can uh and there's they've got lots of videos online you can see for free get an idea of what they're doing uh complete free preview but now the subscription if you want to get it normally it's 57 dollars a month or subscribe for the whole year, get two months free. It's $570. But they've got a special offer for Twit listeners, for Windows Weekly listeners. Sign up now. Use the code WW30. And you'll get 30% off. And it's not just for the first year or the first month. It's forever. So you're getting, uh, effectively, it's going to cost you $40 a month. That's less than the books. 400 bucks for an entire year. ITPro.tv slash... WW, use the offer code WW30 for 30% off. They take the pain out of learning IT. And I can tell you, we've heard from lots of people who really love IT Pro TV, a great solution. Windows Weekly on the air, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, talking about uh, Windows. So what happened? I think, so, I think Calibre is going to be my wrestling name. <laughs> Mucho calibre. Mal calibre. Macho calibre. <laughs> I like it. Macho calibre. <laughs> I'm disappointed that that's not the name. It should be the name. I. You know what? It could be the name. No one. No one knows. C a l i b r e. It could I know be you're calibre because right, it's it's so boringly obvious. You know. Caliber. It's the I British think spelling. P interest. Paul and P interest. P interest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a common. I've had this problem my whole life. You know, you. You read something and, and it's not, it doesn't, it's not pronounced the way you think it is. Well, take it from me as somebody who was one of the first to do technology stuff on the radio back in 1990. Um, yeah. I, I often pronounced words for the first time and ever that, you know, people have been reading them for years, GIF for one. Yeah. Yep. 
And uh, so for so long that they get mad when they hear the real pronunciation. Yeah. So right. I decided I get to say because I'm the first one saying them out loud. <laughs> so since you're the first, you can say whatever. Nice. What calibre? I like it. Paul, uh, the world, Macho the world as I envision in my head is such a more interesting place. <laughs> 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 you know, which is weird, I guess. So interesting, um, kind of. I don't know. Is how did this happen? China. So oh, let, let's give the backstory on this. Yeah. Microsoft has said for years. Oh, by the way, eh, right. <laughs> we have patents that uh, give us uh, both Linux and Android, right? Right, right. And Android, I mean, as, as problematic as it is for Microsoft, has also been kind of a gift uh, in the form of about one to two billion dollars a year in licensing fees. I mean, it's Microsoft's next billion dollar business. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they did this with Linux, but, you know, that wasn't super interesting. I mean, Linux is, by definition, a limited audience. It didn't do very well in the desktop, and you're only going to sell so many servers. So, um, you know, didn't really have the impact. But, I mean, Android is on a billion devices. Right. So, But um, all along, they've never, ever have they right. revealed the code or the patents they claim they own. Right. They, they just said, well, we have them. We'll indemnify you. The they theory show them is to that you, uh, if you're if you're about to license, uh, you know, if they're in negotiations with you, I'm sure they tell you, "Hey, we have oh, this, this, course. this, and this." Right? But but then they <laughs> before they do that, make you sign your life away, right? Yeah. The total NDA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know this and uh, this has been going on for years, and we've been you know people like Mary Joe and I have been waiting for some event where this stuff will go public, and we figured it would be like the Barnes and Noble trial that never happened, and that was as close as we got because Barnes and Noble is one of the companies that said no. Right. Uh, your licenses are baloney and they're out of date and they're trivial and we're going to challenge you in court. And they went all the way. It was I, I believe we were days away from the trial starting and yeah. then suddenly there was a little settlement that occurred. And as part of that settlement, um, Barnes & Noble licensed those uh, patents and Microsoft invested $300 million in the Nook uh, business, which I think we can all agree paid off in a huge fashion. Um, <laughs> so that by that so. raises the question, uh, like, who blinked on that one? Was it Barnes & Noble or was it Microsoft that blinked? Somebody blinked, right? It was a game of chicken. Yeah, yeah my take on, on it is that the, the Nook business, which was the center of this, um, was declining so rapidly and was a money pit for them, and they basically didn't have a choice. Um, who they? Barnes so, and Noble didn't. Uh, Barnes and Noble. Yeah, I, it wasn't so much blinking as it was, you know, this is a this thing's a money pit already, and yeah. even if we win in court, we will spend millions. Yeah. Doing, you know, treading water, and that that's not really a good way to. You, I'm you know, trying to think services. of how this conversation went. They go to Microsoft and said, "I'll give you a buck for the licenses if you'll give me three hundred million dollars for <laughs> no, a no, dying no, business." No. You've seen you've seen the scene in the original Godfather where the guy goes in the room and he has to kiss the ring to yeah. get the box full yeah. of money. Yeah, that's how it went. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just like that. Do you think they paid more than three hundred million dollars for the licenses? Well, w that's the part we don't know. Are they still pay? Right. You know, are they still paying? Probably, right? right? They're paying right. for the patents. Well, they make. And well, I, I think about one of the things that just happened. I mean, not, not to drag this part of it out, but you know, Barnes and Noble just signed an agreement with Samsung to make Nook branded tablets. Now Samsung's the one taking on that responsibility, that licensing responsibility. Samsung is a company that could better afford that. And so in this case, I think Barnes & Noble is um, removing its stuff one layer from the creation of the devices, and it saves money in a number of ways. And that's one of them, you know. Um, I mean, it has to buy a set number of devices. I don't remember what the figure was, but uh, from, Bar from Samsung. So Samsung's protected in some fashion too. But I think Barnes & Noble... Well, no, we know that Barnes & Noble wanted to get out of this business. Originally, it was going to spin it off, not able to do that. You know, here's another way they can separate the, you know, the money losing bits of the business off a little bit by, by you know, farming it out to Samsung. I don't, I don't know if you saw this, but GeekWire, Todd Bishop at GeekWire actually interviewed uh, the Barnes & Noble folks about this. And they he asked them, did you guys, when you did this deal with Microsoft, expect them to make a tablet that you could put Nook on? And they wouldn't comment. Uh, uh, yeah. So we, maybe there w that was part of the deal too. I mean, we don't know. That was clearly Microsoft's intent. Why would Microsoft ever invest in an Android-based device business? Oh, I that guess was a rumor. Okay. Remember, <laughs> but, we called it the book. But, 
We call the it the wood. The wood. Like, yeah. You know, actually, it's 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 like <laughs> yeah. if you could go back in time and say, Paul, you're going to say this sentence in five years, and uh, it would sound ludicrous, you know. But uh, Microsoft, of course, bought a company that makes Android-based devices. So, well, that's all ancient history. And until sure. now, we really don't know. We know kind of the titles of some of these patents, things like um, Method and System for Managing Changes to a Contacts <laughs> Database. I know, I know. But Microsoft claims They're 300 so patents. Uh, so 73 big. of them are standards essential patents. They don't right. show anybody, but now we know what they are because the mofos revealed it. <laughs> right. And I'm not the mofo, the, the mo mo mofcom, mofcom, mofcom. mofcom. <laughs> so, so remember, uh, uh, one more bit of history. Remember when uh, Microsoft bought Nokia? That they got regulatory approval in the U.S. They got regulatory approval in the EU, but China <laughs> held them it around up. the longest. Who was it again? China held them up. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what's so what do you what's your take and on you know this? What's, actually, it's funny you bring not it's it's obvious why you bring that up, but it, it's it's funny that this is coming up in a way because what this has reminded me of is built into the statements that they made following China's approval of this deal was this notion that Microsoft had agreed to some set of terms, which were exactly its licensing terms already. That for all of the complaining and all of the delaying, what Microsoft eventually agreed to do in China is its already established pattern of doing business. Like they didn't get any concession. It's almost like they wanted just to get this stuff for this, <laughs> you know, so that they could, yeah. you know, Publish get it. more information about what is it that yeah. Microsoft has on Android. You know, it's almost like this is why that thing was delayed. It was about this. Wow. I think. think? Really? Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So the Chinese Ministry of Commerce, they took the list of the patents. There's like 200 patent families that Microsoft says uh, they own that Android potentially infringes on. And they published it. They published it as a Word document. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Adding Which insult is hilarious. to injury. <laughs> yeah. And this is MOFCOM, yeah. MOFCOM. Right. The Ministry right. of Commerce, MOFCOM. Right. I like to think of them as the MOFOs. <laughs> um, so what did we learn from this? What did we learn from this patent list? Yeah. So one interesting thing I learned looking through this is some of these patents are patents Microsoft acquired as part of the Rockstar Consortium. Remember when they were uh, doing that? Yeah. They, they still are. They, yeah, they uh, paled up with, I think, Apple was part the of Nor that. The Nortel they patents. They bought the Nortel patents. And then they, after they bought them as a group, they doled different patents out to different uh, participants in the, in the Rockstar Consortium. So some of the ones that Microsoft got are among these patents that they're using against Android. My Chinese is a little rusty, so I'm just going <laughs> to defer yeah. to you as to what this means. <laughs> but there's some English yeah, I mean, in here. Yeah. And some of these we already kind of assumed, like XFAT file system, everybody kind of thought that's got to be one right. of them. And things around Exchange Active Sync also right. probably among those patents. And now we're seeing a much more detailed list there's of the ones of that there's a lot of them. Right. There's a lot of them. Yeah, so that makes it more obvious now why when Microsoft walks into the room with an Android phone maker or a Chrome OS device maker and shows this list, you probably are going to just say, okay, let me just pay to license these instead of fighting you on each yeah. separate it's patent. Yeah, an awful lot of them, 200 patents. It's a lot of them. I think uh, Aris Technica said more than 200 patent families, um, so that's not even just total number of patents. Are these all software patents? Some of these are hardware patents. I believe some have to do with, like, camera yeah stuff? i mean there's things like yeah, I, I reducing power like usage on a wi-fi yeah. network stuff like yeah. that but a lot of them are like a system and method for finding the closest match of a data entry that's a oh, software you know, algorithm serving locally relevant advertisements yeah you understand that that's a patent for half of the businesses on the internet right you know yeah. I mean, it's just it's some of this stuff is, is very this. interesting these yeah. software patents suck <laughs> they really they do. They just suck. They really do. Unless you're the company that has them, and then you're like, right. yay, $2 billion business. Woo. Yeah. No, it's, it's like a method for adding two numbers together and arriving at a sum. Yeah. yeah. You know, I you mean, can it's like really, that. Yeah. Oh, you probably could. Probably have. <sighs> now, what's interesting, I mean, this is U these are U.S. patents, but uh, I guess because they're U.S. patents, if you want to do business in the U.S., you gotta you got to pay to play, right? Yep. How much does Microsoft make off of this? Do we know? 
Well, the estimates are one to two billion. Um, we don't know for sure because they don't report it out. But that's... people always said like five bucks a handset for every Android. Yeah. Well, and we... So the other thing is, it impacts over fifty percent of all Android devices sold. We don't know the exact number, but it's over yeah. half. Why not all of them? Why not every well, single not in history? Yeah. It should. Be, yeah. I mean, this is all. Yeah. Oh no, they Leo, they'll it. they'll get there. It's only oh, 2014. They're working I'll give them time. On it. <laughs> I see. I, see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. There's only so much you can do in a day. Give them time. Yeah. All right, we got a new the Akron. Motorola X, the ahead. Motorola X phone, I don't think they ever got them to license patents for, right? <laughs> and, I, I, and that one, right. I mean, and is there a lower number of patents that applies to that kind of device? Or, you know, where do these patents come in? Do they come in at the at that level? Do they come in higher, you know, at the Google Play level? Uh, I would imagine it applies to both in many cases. But I'm, it's yeah, not, but nobody not wants to either. sue Google, so everybody sues Google by yeah. proxy. Right. I'd love to see that. I need that before I retire. I oh, need you Microsoft will. and Google to oh, go at will. it in court. They'll be. It'll be because remember, it's not just Microsoft as for these rock star patents. No. Yeah. It's everybody but Google. I think I got a good fifteen years left in me, Leo, and I need this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I need this to happen. I just want to live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then all of Microsoft's patents will be uh, invalidated, and I'll be on the front porch somewhere going, "I knew it." <laughs> there you see. see what happens. Hey, here's a new uh, here's a new uh, al uh, uh, acronym. <laughs> Mles, Mles. You yes. could just add anything to AAS as a service, and you'll yeah. get what is Mles? Machine language as a service. <laughs> Machine learning. Mles. Mles. Yep. Machine say. learning as a service. Oh, we need more molasses. We do. Yes. We do. Yep. Machine so Microsoft announced this service. week, machine learning as a service. So this is an Azure visit. product? What is this? Uh, sorry, so hosted on Microsoft Azure. Yep. Yeah. So what machine learning is, is you can take historical data and make future predictions about behavior and trends. Right. right? So they're taking all this learning that they've uh, harnessed through things like Bing and Xbox Live, and they're kind of packaging this uh, learning up into a service that people are going to be able to use themselves to do predictive analytics against their own data. So you store your data on Azure, you use these tools they have and templates, and you can take the machine learning capabilities and apply them against your data to make predictions about the future. So this is for things like, uh, say, fraudulent transactions, which is what Microsoft Store itself is using it for. You could take uh, your data on your pattern of bad transactions, feed it into the, in with this service, and you can make very good guesses about future trends and, uh, around fraudulent data and use that to kind of head them off at the pass. Yeah, Dvorak's always said if you um, if you want your credit card to be denied, buy two tanks of gas and uh, a pair of Nikes. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, buy, buy the two tanks of gas in a, in a gas station in upstate New York and then yeah. buy something online. Yeah. That will do yeah. it. Well, the two tanks of Every gas time. is because what happens is people who steal a credit card, the first thing they do is fill up their tank and their friend's. Right. So the two tanks of gas, nobody buys two tanks of gas in a single gas station at the same time. Sure. Bingo. Yeah. And yeah. then buy a pair of Nikes because who doesn't want yep. sneakers? That yeah. actually happened to us, by the way. Um, oh, wow. And it was upstate New York. Really? Yeah. Another one that's popular that's happened to me several times is uh, making a tiny contribution to an overseas charity. <laughs> was it the Paul Therott Fund? Yeah. Like a buck. Suspicious. Oh, like a buck to an English, uh, like a minor English charity because these charities are so small. They don't do any checking. And it's, a way to, it's merely a way to see, is this an actual credit card? Or is this just some random digits? Yeah. That's and then awesome. if it goes through, then you can startly ramp up and buy some uh, sneakers. And That's how most of my sales for the book have gone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Therod has a small charity in the UK. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, molasses. Yeah, so the preview. You're going to get the preview of this next month sometime, July. Anybody can sign up for it. It's going to be paid. It's going to be 50% of the cost because it's already been uh, very heavily tested among 100 customers and partners. And one more interesting thing. This is business thing. intelligence too, right? It is. I mean, it is pretty much. Yeah. Right. Codename Passau is what this is, um, which we've heard about in the past. And Passau is a town in Germany in lower Bavaria. There you have it. Passau. 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 That's Passau. probably not how you pronounce that, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it's, like it's pronounced it should Chardet. Be. It should be. Uh, yeah. Calibre. 
Calibre. Uh, Macho que calibre. Calibre. <laughs> So there you go. Microsoft is betting big on customer cloud services. It's a big business for them. It is. Um, Very big business. I think, really, that's the platform of the future. We know that, the cloud. And uh, it's Amazon, Google, and Microsoft that are competing. Apple was kind of standing at the door looking in and saying, can I can I get in there? <laughs> hey, guys. Can yeah, I guys, borrow a cup of Azure? Guys. Uh, oh, I mean, we think they're using Azure. At they Apple are. They don't. Yeah, iPhone. but they. they but, yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah. Consumer doesn't care or no. No, but it's kind of cool sure. anyway. I keep hearing that. Uh, who did I talk to that said it's absolutely the case? <laughs> I can't remember, uh, but What's he said, that? "I know. We know. We've talked to people. We know about Azure on Apple." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, this yeah. has been seen in traffic reports, you know, from iCloud yeah. and. No one's ever admitted it publicly from Apple or Microsoft, or even I can't right. even get Microsoft to say it privately. But yeah, they probably have traffic. You know, a pretty pretty good deal with my Apple. Never to ever, ever. Exactly. You know, when you sign up yeah. for um, Azure, you get to test it first and see what your you know what your bill is going to look like. I'd give anything to see yeah. what their bill looks like. Oh. <laughs> and let's send three thousand uh, <laughs> charges in a yeah. second. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah. So, um, but that's so. There's enterprise. There's enterprise cloud, which clearly is the future. But the cons even consumers like iCloud are moving to the cloud. Uh, one oh, yeah. uh, OneDrive is a good example. Yeah. And this if is anything a, more quickly, I would say. Really? Yeah. Businesses might have some. It's kind of a natural reluctance to put everything uh, off. Yeah. Off. Businesses the ramp. have a natural reluctance to do anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, change. You know. yes. Change. Yeah. So, so the way Microsoft's trying to get around that problem is they're trying to hook them on the consumer services, which makes a lot of sense. Like get them to use OneDrive, get people to try Outlook.com at home, get them to try OneNote service at home. And then they're hoping when they go to work, they say, hey guys, you know what? That OneDrive thing is kind of great. How about OneDrive for business? Can we get that in here? So right. it's a whole bring your own device trend that they're backing. And it's, it's an interesting way to look at why are they putting so much effort at Microsoft into these free cloud services? It's because they're trying to get to the enterprise, which is where they still make most of their money. Very, very good logic. I, you know, it's I, I, the next line is a, an article I wrote that's sort of on this topic. But the thing that strikes me about it is, and I, and I sort of uh, threw this in at the end of the article, is I wish Microsoft would consolidate their services a little bit. You know, they have a, a OneDrive service that's for consumers and a OneDrive for businesses, obviously for businesses, but they're not based on the same technology. And right. there's no you know, clear connection. There's really no connection but beside the branding between the two, nor is there any technical connection that you could make as a, as a user of those services. You know, like one of the problems with using Google Drive or Dropbox or OneDrive or whatever as a consumer is that those things aren't managed and can't be managed by your business. And so if you're using those things kind of on the outside and they want to bring you in house and use your, you know, their own stuff, there's no real way to kind of make that happen. And there are no consumers, out, not, I mean, obviously there are probably two or three who listen to this podcast, but there aren't that many consumers out in the real world using like a standalone OneDrive for business, you know, that could easily be, uh, you yeah. know, managed by an actual business. So I, I, I wish they would figure that out because um, yeah. that's kind of a problem. You know, I, I think someday they're, I think they're moving this way because we already know things like Outlook.com are in the same group now as Exchange yeah. and, and SharePoint, right? So, I think the plan is at some point Outlook.com and Outlook are one thing, right? Yeah, I don't know how they get right. there. And, but and that's, that's another excellent example. Not related at all. Yeah, right. Right yeah. now they are not the same thing. Not even remotely the same thing. Right. Because when you say Outlook web app or Outlook web access, which is what we used to say. Oh, wow. It would be easy to confuse that with Outlook.com. Which I often do. You know, yeah. Likewise, when Microsoft comes up with like an OWA app for Android, like they just did in a preview form or for iOS, um, you might assume that works for Outlook and Outlook.com rather. And it, it does not. You might assume it works with uh, Outlook, like Outlook does with your Exchange on prem work email. It does not. <laughs> it only works with Office 365. Yeah. 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 Um, and so there's some, you know, I. It's part of the problem with moving so quickly. You know, some things uh, get lost in the trans in the transition. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, anything more to say about that? No, let's move on, shall we? Yeah. I know we're on. I know we're pressed. No, no, I'm just <laughs> I'm just you know, I'm looking down the rundown, seeing what I can slash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're gonna skip this entire surface though. This, this whole thing on surface. Forget that. This is who cares? Padding. Office is the bellwether. <laughs> Mary Jo must have written this. I don't think this is nope, bell. I did not. No, really? Nope. Office is the bellwether for Microsoft's rapid release mantra. Well, because there are other parts of Microsoft that have adopted this rapid release thing, including some before Office, really. And but they don't have as broad of an impact on the wider business as, as Office does. You know, Windows Phone, for example, or Xbox Music, obviously. Um, they're on rapid release, and they're kind of interesting in their own right. But Office impacts everything across the board. And there's a lot that goes into this, but um, good and bad. You know, there was a, a Mary Jo had written an article. I don't. I guess we don't have it in here, but about an, uh, a Windows update for Office 2013 that broke only those, or, and not all of them, but only those installs of Office that occurred through Office 365 using that click-to-run technology. Um, that's not a typical uh, kind of roadblock with a cloud service because it happened on kind of traditional on-prem software, but it only impacted the one that you get with your subscription, and that's kind of a weird deal. Um, but again, you know, these are the kinds of things that are going to happen when you're, you know, you're kind of moving, moving, moving. And uh, Microsoft has set up a, a, a pretty stringent schedule for Office 365, how they're going to upgraded over time, you know, when businesses can uh, hold back on updates and when they have to put them out, you know, out into the real world. And, you know, they, they service and update Office 2013 as if it were a service, even though it's not, which I think is kind of special. And there's more Office apps out in the world now than anything. If you look on iOS or Android, there's Office apps, there's like apps for everything now. It's crazy. Uh, not just Office, like as we know it, like Word and Excel and... Um, PowerPoint for the iPad, but just, I mean, all of these apps, everything, it seems like every, everything is basically serviced by an app through the office. Well, it's not really an office group anymore, but through the, the group that does office. And so I, it's interesting, I mean, good and bad and mostly good. I mean, they've proven that you can take this traditional software thing that Microsoft had that was its biggest business that you think maybe it would be conservative with and kind of leave it over there on the side while it investigates these other new businesses. But they really have just kind of thrown it into the mix. And I think that's I think that's kind of just an interesting story in its own right. And well, also rapid release is what you get when you work in the when you live in the cloud because you don't host the application. So, yeah, um, it's we're all just going to have to get used to that. Yeah, some <laughs> kicking and screaming. Right? Yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> I, I'm uh, yeah. I'm giving a presentation tonight, and my um, my photo for that what you just described is uh, one of those 1950 pictures where, the, where everyone's hiding under the desk. <laughs> you know? yeah. One of the duck and cover. Duck and cover, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, kicking and screaming is an error. Mm. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what? What makes it more complicated is uh, the reason so many businesses, especially big businesses, want time to test is lately Microsoft's been rolling out a lot of patches that have been breaking things. And so if you're right. in the cloud and they just roll you an update and it breaks <laughs> something at your at your company, you're kind of out of luck, right? right. Oh, so, and by the way, th these are businesses that will cite a Windows NT 4.0 service pack as their reason for never updating anything because they still yeah. remember, you know, 15 years ago, whenever that was, is something went wrong and it was really bad yeah. and we yeah. don't trust updates. Well, it's 15 years now and we're yeah. past well, even more recent, Those guys are going to need to retire before we fix this. No, problem. even more it's, recent, this has happened, right? Like, look at uh, yeah. Service Pack 1 for, um, what was it? Uh, Hot it, fixes often broke stuff. Office that, 2013. That wasn't yeah. unusual. Yeah, but that's because you're... That's because... The SharePoint one had to be pulled, right? Service yeah, yeah it SharePoint. had to be pulled. But right. that's because you're doing... Uh, that's a very... I think, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems a very different thing when you're updating well, but, no, a complex no, system right. in it, place the, the problem, but, versus but, doing it in the cloud. The people here is update. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we don't yeah. want updates, you know. Yeah. Um, no, and it some people have hybrid um, cl cloud and on-prem. Uh, yeah setups you know so for them they're they are worried if they have something come into the cloud and they're doing a hybrid setup where they're actually using software on prem connecting to a cloud service what's that going to do so i think some of this is justified right that we just got to have oh, yeah, things yeah, yeah. work better and and microsoft's working on this they're giving uh they're experimenting right now with giving people a new kind of way to dog food some of these updates before they actually implement them across the company. So that's a really good thing. We've talked about that on the show before. And that's that's uh, actually one of the great things about Microsoft right now because they really do listen. And 
you know, I think a lot of people, when you just hear this abstractly, like rapid release, we're going to update, 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 you know, people get freaked yeah. out by that. Yeah. Um, the reality is that's how the consumer stuff's going to go. You're not sure. going to be able to stop that. But sure. on the business side, they're, they're doing what Mary Jo is describing. They're, they're giving these guys a way to roll it out in a limited fashion to a certain small user group so they can make sure it works. And then they have X amount of time, whatever it is, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days before it, it, it you know, at some point it's going to have to be rolled out because it's, yeah. we're kind of working with versionless software in a sense. Um, yeah. And so, you know, you need to be, everyone's going to have to be brought up to date at some point, but they're, you know, they're trying to meet them in the middle. See, to me, this is, this is one of the appealing features of, uh, of uh, cloud-based uh, software is that the updates happen, they happen cleanly, yeah. easily, uh, <laughs> constantly, but rapid, they, they can be constant. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I think we are in the same boat in the sense that, you know, there's a certain amount of glee. Um, oh, Chrome needs an update. Great. <laughs> you know, yeah, they, or, yeah. they, both Chrome uh, and Firefox have stopped Chrome letting updates. you know we, that there are we updates. these without even thinking. They know? don't it's even like, tell right. you anymore because they figure, yeah. well, we, why, why rock the boat? Right. Let's just right, just, like Internet Explorer now with the silent updates too, right? Yeah, all of them do it. Yeah, you, you don't want to be the guy that wakes up in the morning and you have 121 emails right. because everyone that you support now can't access the internet because there was an update to whatever right. it was. Right. And what the heck happened? And now I got to go back to WSUS and maybe roll back an update. However you do it, yeah. it you know you don't want to be that guy. I guess you're right. And I, yeah. that's you know yeah, that's that makes the sense. I, I I I'm sympathetic. Yeah. Uh. But uh, I'll tell you what, I like it when it comes to things like, say, Squarespace.com, one of the beauties of... <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, <laughs> no, it's just, uh, you're still, you're, you're good at that. One of the, one of the beauties of having a company that does the hosting for your website and does all the software is it's always kept up to date. It's always kept secure. You don't, you don't even have to be aware of it. And, uh, you know, I think if it's done right, it doesn't, it, which Squarespace does, it doesn't break anything. It just improves things. Squarespace is constantly improving your experience um new templates new apps uh new features and when it comes to the web i think keeping up to date i've i've recently learned is really a challenge the web moves faster than any other kind of software and standards change and uh even just styles change so for instance nowadays if you look at this, if you go to squarespace.com, you can actually browse the templates, use it free for two weeks, even import all your existing data so you can get a sense of what a Squarespace site would look like for you. Squarespace.com, just click the Get Started button. Uh, they don't ask for a credit card, personal information, or even our offer code. Uh, well, one of the things I've noticed, a lot of sites are now full bleed. So they the front page is just a big image, and they have a lot of full bleed uh, templates. You don't have to do that, of course. You have full control, but if you're a photographer, if you do something visual, even if you, know, you just want people to feel good about when they come to your site, that's an illustrator. So that seems like a logical uh, uh, look for their first site. Salvation Taco. This is a taqueria. And, the, I mean, gorgeous, isn't it? Just gorgeous. These are Squarespace sites. What I've done is I've gone to the Squarespace I've, uh, page. I've clicked Get Started, and then I picked, uh, you know, at random, a template. This is Marquee. And, and then you can look at all these different places that are using Marquee as uh, their template. Now, one of the things that you get automatically, it's mobile responsive. That means you don't have a separate mobile site. Your one site fits all. Oh, this is cool. This is like a, some sort of smartwatch. This is very modern, this style, where you have a big image at front and you scroll down. We're actually looking at this for our own uh, website. This is free. You get this for free. Plus, you can customize it totally without knowing JavaScript or CSS. You don't have to have... It's all point and click, drag and drop. Add uh, your Twitter feeds or your Facebook feeds, LinkedIn, you know, all your social networks. Use their great apps to post on the site, to monitor your metrics, even social media follows. And... and Every Squarespace site has commerce built in. So even at the $8 a month level, that's the least expensive uh, pricing. Even at the $8 a month level, you can um, have you can sell one good or you could take donations. So it's great for a nonprofit. For full e-commerce, it's only 24 bucks a month. And when you buy a year's plan, you get the domain name for free. I just think this is a great thing. If you're looking to create a new site or maybe you're unhappy with your content management system or your hosting, the best hosting, the best software... Squarespace.com, that logo designer that makes it so easy to design your own logo. And, of course, the best support ever, 24-7, right out of their offices in New York. Those are the support guys and gals. 
And uh, they just do a great job. They also have workshops. They have uh, webinars, videos, a complete knowledge base. So you, you, there's no question you can't get answered right away. Squarespace.com. My invitation to you is just try it for free. You don't need an offer code. Just go to squarespace.com and try it out. If you do decide to buy, use the offer code Windows and we'll take 10% off. Squarespace.com. Use the offer code Windows. Try it today. That's a perfect example of... So I, I, the idea of having to constantly check your WordPress site every week because you have to find the security flaws because if you don't, right. the hackers will immediately hack into your system or have somebody else host it for you and keep it up to date. That just seems like a no-brainer to me. I, I like yeah. That's why I like rapid release or whatever you call it. I like well, it's about idea. giving up control, you know, and letting yeah, go. Yeah, if you're an IT way. guy, then you – and it's true – because, because you know, sysadmins go, oh no, no, I want to know everything. Yeah, but, but they get, you know, more often than they, not, they're like the the they guys with the whips, you know, making sure <laughs> that the uh, pyramids went up on schedule. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Move. <laughs> I think he was called Calibre. <laughs> he was called Calibre. <laughs> <laughs> Surface Pro three pre-orders have begun shipping. What is what was the date? June twenty fifth. They're supposed to arrive? June 20th. 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 Yep. So day after uh, tomorrow, Friday. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, yeah. So Did I'm going to go. I, I don't know. If, are you, no, are you I go was thinking of it, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know if Alex got one. I can't justify getting another computer. <laughs> I have <laughs> yeah. so many. Yeah. I really want to try it. I'm hoping somebody here will get it, and I can try theirs. We'll get one for review. Yeah. I think so, I'm going to uh, go to the Boston event on Friday morning. Like at the store, the Boston Microsoft store? Yeah. I was told that there would be several people waiting in line to buy one. More than one? <laughs> That's what they said, several. They used the word several. Yep. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I, I would have, <laughs> I would have sugarcoated that one a little different. I'm not a, a, a marketer, but I think they I said, would have used the slate, you know. There will be several people lined up to buy one? I would have said there will be customers lined up to buy the product. Wow. You several know. of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, now, weren't they going to yeah. do power management uh, update before the? Yeah. It's still time, Liam. Don't have it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys have them. You you've got the yeah. pre-release ones that uh, they gave yeah. you at the at build. So, yeah. what does that mean? Is your power management suck? Uh, we're having no. issues with when you power it up. Um, sometimes you can't start the device up that easily, or the date and time are wrong. I I just had that again last night. Uh, the date and time. That's frustrating. Yep. Yeah. The good um, news is, you know, it's like anything else. Like, you freak out the first time, you're scared. Yeah. Uh, the second time, you kind of like, but you know, you, but you, you know what's wrong. But after a while, you're just yeah. like, eh, I get it. Yeah. You know, you get used yeah. to it. It's, Computer yeah. users have a marvelous ability to uh, just, just get used to <laughs> slight, you know, paper cuts. Indignations, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was going to call it self flagellation. Def, but def, yeah, it's, it's uh, def by a thousand cuts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, but they're going to fix that. And they also have developed a fix supposedly for the start button, people brushing against the start button when they're drawing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What it, happens? You, it turns it off? Uh, it it, you, if you do, right, you br <laughs> It brings you to home, right? Oh, yeah, so of course. If you, right. if you yeah. lean on it, like if you're drawing, oh. especially, yeah. Penny, uh, there was a post on Penny Arcade about this where he, um, because he's an artist, right, had, had right. this issue. So Microsoft had him come. And he, they watched him draw. So show us how. Saw. Well, how do you draw? I, show I, us yeah, how you that draw. Was it. I'm yeah. of mixed uh, emotions on this Penny Arcade stuff because, yeah. you know, he loved the, guys the like Surface Pro Three. He, he loved. You know, it. He likes the device. Yeah. You know, he's good, he has good feedback. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, there are probably 117 people on this earth that have his needs, and right. I don't know that focusing on that, you know, is necessarily uh, the smartest thing, but. You know, I, I, going after the creative market is smart. I mean, whatever. But um, I, I hope they spend as much time looking at, you know, business users who want to write notes in right. OneNote. I mean, yep. um, they just seem to be spending a lot of time with this guy. And I think it's a little weird, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're so happy to have Boris endorsing them that they just can't stop. Yeah, I, right. Well, I, you also, can tell they're, they're yeah, yeah. yeah, that's part of it. Also, the, you know, the pen is such a big part of the experience on the Surface Pro 3. I mean, it comes with a pen bundled in right. with it when you buy it right so and it's got they uh, want to make sure it's good with the pen right and it's got pressure and they changed levels. the pen which was yeah. is that how they solved it oh no no no, no. no. i mean they changed it between two and three so right, right, right. 
the problem is if you read his post, I mean, Microsoft I is promising these kind of fixes for the pen because there's also a pressure sensitivity thing. That's not a it's not a problem. It's just that as it turns out, people don't press on the screen as hard as you might think, and they right. they can't access all of those levels and yada yada yada. But I I, I hope software can fix this. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's. I, at some point, you reach the point where if there isn't a problem, it's just a problem, and it, you're not necessarily going to fix it with a software update, you know? Mm -hmm. And I I, I don't know. I, so this is a new thing. It's 256 levels of pressure versus 1,024 in the old one. Um, no one actually uses it like that anyway, so you, you have a, a limited selection of, you know, yeah. pressure points that you can apply. The fix is kind of involved. It's about um, if the pen's in contact with the screen for a set amount of time, the home button gets disabled. and um, that seemed, they, all, all touch devices have some sort of spurious input yeah. rejection. That's not that's oh, something yeah. you have to deal with. Yeah. They just Actually, said they don't anything, know how I, I, they're going to roll it out, right? They, they're they not yeah. quite sure how to do right. it. This isn't related to pen, but I notice this across devices. And I mean, this is maddening. In fact, I, on my iPhone, I actually think there's a part of the screen that's like, it doesn't work because... You sit there and you like hello, hello, yeah, yeah. hello. Unresponsiveness <laughs> you know? is a and is a uh, issue yeah, on touch very devices. Strange. Yeah. yeah, very strange. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's not right. Yeah. You should bring it yeah. back and get it fixed. Yeah. Uh, so, but again, power management firmware uh, not out yet, but someday. Uh, hopefully, in the next yeah, two days, very soon. Hours yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Are they shipping? Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, I've talked to people who said that it mar it's marked now as they shipped it. They don't have it yet, but they shipped so it to them. So maybe you'll route. plug it in and there'll be an update. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I cannot imagine why they waited. <laughs> you know, they have a bunch of people using these things. I mean, wouldn't you want to test it? I, I, you know, so it could come later. I, I'm, it's... I, I think this is a, a glitch. I, I, they better fix sooner rather than later because yeah, people are going to flip I, out if they can't start their Surface yeah. after they charge it up. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. This well, one's that would be, be a big fixed. one. That's potentially one of the well, side effects. Yeah. There's a trick. I mean, it, you, you can make it work, but how would you know yeah. that? Oh, boy. No, you, you know, know that. And So maybe there's a little piece of paper in the that, box I mean, that says, no, you may notice you can't turn your Surface on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> what is the Don't trick worry. so anybody who's getting a Surface will know? You hold down, you turn it off. So yeah. It would be off. You hold down the volume button. You turn it on. You let go of the volume button. Oh, no, no. That's for getting into the firmware. <laughs> no, you know what, what I it? did? It's, I, I, I volume took up the and keyboard off. And yes, I just held the power button down. And I clicked it a few times and it turned it on. But then my date and time was wrong. So, yeah, that will happen. So, uh, actually, what you have to do is hold down the volume up and the power, and I think it's 12 seconds or 15 is seconds, it? and it will it, it will always come back. Do you guys um, hear yourself? I know. No, and th oh, this Leo, is why no, they know. have to fix I, this. I this can't be not fixed. <laughs> this is insane. This, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Listen, you have yeah. to hold it in kind of a contorted fashion. So, but I took off the keyboard, are... and then, oh, wait a minute now. I, I find <laughs> that if you're in a fetal position already... It's easier to hit those two buttons. <laughs> oh, boy. But then that's my natural I kind of now understand why you're saying they should really have fixed this before. Can you? No, seriously, is it not amazing that we're not crazy people? Yeah. I think we <laughs> are, know? actually. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'd argue we might be, but... <laughs> uh, you might be masochists. Uh, yes. But uh, this, is, this cannot be something that is not fixed because when everyday right. people get this device and this happens, it's, well, it's they'll, time they'll for... send it back. Yeah, and this so is what I, I mean can't turn it on. Imagine, it's broken. Imagine right. if a software fix doesn't fix this, right? Imagine it's that. It's going to fix it. It's going to okay. fix it. Paul Maybe. God. Okay, let's be honest. <laughs> Wait a minute. You guys got pre-release hardware. Maybe in the pre-production hardware is a problem. It's not a problem now. It's just you. I, it seems it's I, power I cable connected, right? Haven't they said that too? Not, absolutely. I mean, and yeah. Listen, the the power connection has always been one of Surface's most widely touted features and its weakest link actually literally weakest link mm -hmm. and um you know they've improved it you know two and pro two they improved it um i guess especially on two and they improved it again you know with three and it's a lot better but you know i i had that night in the hotel in um fort collins i plugged it in went to bed woke up it wasn't charged you know i am going to go out on a limb here because honestly there's no way they could be shipping a product like this you no. guys really? got early. No, I swear to God, no company oh, in its right mind. Certainly not Microsoft. You guys got ba got bad batch 
production models. This has never been a widespread problem. Uh, okay, uh, that's interesting. Isn't that possible? It is yeah, possible. It, is possible. it has to be. It is, it is. possible. I, I, yes, no, it, that's, it, it is, is possible. My, I actually don't think that's what happened. No, it is possible possible. because when I got the first generation Surface RT, I bought one of the very first ones that you could buy. I bought it on the very night it went on sale, yeah. and I had yeah, a problem yeah. with my power, and, and I had to send it back to Microsoft, and they said, you get some early machine that, yeah. That well, and you guys got it. You got store. it months before it was even being sold. You yeah, got the one, very I, I first actually, production. Yeah, I didn't because I was banned from getting review units at that point. But um, yeah, yeah, we won't bring that up a, again. Banned so by changed. by Microsoft or by your by ZDNet? By Microsoft. No, by Microsoft. And um, so I ended up buying one on the first day because I could never get a review unit. Oh, for uh, the RT. I, yeah, for the but RT. But this is yeah. but this this Surface yeah. Pro three that you both got was yeah. These are early review. Very units. early review a, units. A month, a month ahead of you know whenever. I, 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 you know what? I I, I hear you, I, but. You know, we know and, and have heard that there are boxes of Surface Minis sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Right. Um, I believe that these were likewise sitting there ready to. I I I, I don't. I wouldn't I be think, surprised if the first batch that went out to people were yeah. just like this. You know, I'm. That's I'm a nightmare. This is a software yeah. fix is going to fix us. They, I know it is. I'm, <laughs> She's I'm confident. adamant. <laughs> I am confident She's like, because a software fix is going to fix this. It is. <laughs> and they, I will not listen to anything it. else. I, <laughs> no, I am just not entertaining the idea that this is not okay. Gonna I, I usually yeah. go right for the worst case scenario thing, you know. You do. You kind of do. I do, yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm saying, you know, just like <laughs> happens now more and more when you buy a Windows 8 device, you get the device, you turn it on, and it says you need a whole bunch of updates. Here, here are the updates. Apply them. Okay, now you're all set. All That's right. going to be this. Good. Okay. All I right? hope you're right. I mean, I obviously I I hope you're right. I mean, I, and by the way, whatever it's <laughs> worth, I really. I like this device a lot. It's fine. And look, I'm technical enough that and yeah. dealing with this is no problem, whatever. Um, although I did have that was a scary moment, I will say that. Well, the first morning, it was, that was a little weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, it it's worked, but it be works. Good. It's fine. And, and um, no, let's not yeah, stress over it. You sound like you're <laughs> whistling past the graveyard. No, yeah. it's going to be fixed, guys. It's okay. Leo, be but fixed. you know what? When it turns on, mwah, <laughs> it's so, so worth happy. it once yeah. you so get happy. the thing started and the date more, fixed you, know? you won't believe so the the yeah. rule is not to ever turn it off then yeah pretty no, much. <laughs> <laughs> you can, no because actually it's you might connected. be able to fix it by turning off hibernation i've never tried that you're right it's, it's connected possible. standby oh, it's a, related oh that people. thing sucks i hate hibernation yeah we talked about that yeah. last week. Hibernation is never. I'm not going to touch. I, I want to see Microsoft Six before. Is I it on by it, default? Of course it is. Oh, of course, no. It's got this new advanced power management that's yeah. never happened before on a right. x86 and chip. So now we know why. The, uh, <laughs> chip. Yeah. But it is doing well, saving my battery. I have to say, because uh, it's doing the connected standby is definitely letting me get longer battery life when I'm not using the Surface all the time. You know, shut it off, turn it on a day later, and there's actually still battery. Yay. That, sure. that sounds small, but it's big. Well, it's much like Spain, who's eight minutes away from being eliminated from the World Cup because Aww. of losing two to nothing to Chile. It's mu Aww. it's either Chile or Chicago. I'm not sure what C H I. Much like that, Microsoft is down to the the last few minutes that they can update this thing. <laughs> no, they are pretty much. They're down to the last this is few it. minutes. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. The clock is ticking. Microsoft could be eliminated from the World Cup. No. Oh well, uh, Microsoft could be. A and Surface Pro me. two prices are d are dropping. So if you wanted to get a uh, a Surface that has good power management, it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still wait though because the prices <laughs> it could drop farther. Right you think they'll come even lower? Oh yeah. Oh, they I will definitely. It'd, it'd be, yeah. It'd, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. So they they dropped the price of the Surface Pro two uh, between a hundred and two hundred dollars, depending on which models you buy. And, you know, the reason they're doing this, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, it's it's a fire sale. No, they they said at the launch of the Surface Pro 3, they're not going to make any more Surface Pro 2s. This is their new flagship. So they're just depleting their inventory, basically. And they're going to keep dropping the price until they finally get rid of them. They're not mm -hmm. making more. If you want a Surface Pro 2, if that, you know, it's also Core i5 based, just like the um, Surface Pro 3 is. It's shipping this week. If you want that model, has lower battery life, um, it, it has other limitations, um, but has the old power cord, et cetera. Doesn't have the pen, the new pen. 
But if you if you're happy enough with that device. You're, you're able to get it cheaper now, and the prices probably will go even lower. Still wait just a little bit, because the mainstream models, yeah. those two lower end ones, are only 100 bucks cheaper. Right. I mean, honestly, and one of them maps almost exactly to the specs in Surface Pro 3. It's a $100 difference. I mean, I would just get the 3. Or wait, because the prices are going to come down. I mean, obviously, there's a limited supply of these devices, so when they're gone, they're gone. But, I mean, I think the chances are good you're going to see... Uh, at least a hundred bucks more at some point than like, you know, maybe even again. So they'll, they'll all, you know, they'll end up on eBay or whatever, however these things work, but um, the prices will come down again. So I, I'd wait at least one more price drop. What, uh, you mentioned the mini. Yep. Is there, are we going to be going to a landfill in Alamogordo in New Mexico in about yeah. 20 years? <laughs> and uh, no. No? no, 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 they'll release that sucker and it will have like copyright 2013 Microsoft <laughs> on the outside of it. Man. Or they'll use the parts, right? Maybe they'll just say, you know what? We're going to rebuild the device. We're going to use the parts. Um, they wow. they almost did supposedly unveil the Mini, the ARM-based Surface right. Mini. But at the last yeah. minute decided it wasn't differentiated enough. Was, Plus, they didn't have Office Gemini. And so they said, no. Let's Plus, wait. we're literally days away. Are they going to give up on RT? No. No. Um, the, there's still going to be more ARM devices, more Surface ARM devices, Panos Panay said. They have not given up. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. Uh, the operating system will be different. It, it won't be uh, Windows RT. It'll be this new version probably of Threshold that they're building that will run on both phones and low-end low PCs and tablets. Excellent. Yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Xbox One. The time has come for us to talk, Paul, and for <laughs> Mary Jo to wander out. I'll go get a I, coffee I was, now. Yes. I was told on Twitter the other day that I, I talk about video games uh, almost endlessly on this podcast. It's not I'm, true. I was a little confused by that. But, there has yet. Um, <laughs> it was Mary Jo Foley who tweeted that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it was. Right. It was my ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that in mind, I'd like to spend about uh, two and a half hours on this topic. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Microsoft uh, releases monthly system updates for the Xbox One, which are desperately needed because the system kind of shipped in a half finished state, state from a software perspective. Um, the nicer thing they're doing now, though, is they're also providing early access to those updates to a select group of testers, I think, of people who've um, you know, signed up to possibly be part of the program and they got in somehow. Um, I'm actually on that program. I'm not, I don't even remember how it happened. But, um, and then every month they talk about the stuff that's coming you know, for the next update, and I think the people who are on the early access can get it early. So for July... They're adding a, a snap view for the achievements, uh, which is actually kind of a neat thing. So you're playing a game, and on the snap view, you've got this list of achievements for that game. You can list them in the order that's important to you, and you can see your progress. Because you'll, it will say something like, uh, there's the example that's in the picture I can see is, you know, you get the zombie killer achievement in whatever zombie game for killing 100 zombies. You can see how many you've killed and how close you are to getting that achievement. And for people who care about achievements, um, that's actually kind of a big deal. Yeah, I like that. And then, yeah, the rest of the updates that are coming in July are not necessarily a huge deal. Um, they're supporting game bundles, which I think they talked about at D3. Um, this is a way for uh, developers to sell uh, packages of one or more games or a game plus a bunch of content, you know, downloadable content in a single package for a lower price, you know, that kind of thing. And so it sounds like a fairly obvious feature that somehow didn't you know, <laughs> occur to anybody last year, but now they're adding it. Um, they're adding more voice control languages and some other things, but oh, and here's one that actually I'm going to enjoy is they're adding a like feature to the game DVR, um, so you can look at clips and you can like them oh. like you can on you know Facebook. That's YouTube, nice. So. I like that. Yeah, nothing major, but you know, just a bunch of. Tell you, uh, we features. talked about this last week. The uh, last the June update adding that external storage was a big one. Yeah, That's yeah, a yeah, big yeah. One. Very happy about that. I just downloaded. Don't forget games if you like are an Xbox One. Uh, user, you can get those uh, Xbox, what do they call them, games for gold? Yes, and I got and the two. Uh, so there was a Halo game and... Uh, yep, and as of the 16th, it was like Max something. Yeah, Max and his brother. His brother get... Yeah, yeah it's dumb. It's, yeah, kid, grab it's, it's free. It's, yeah. a good, it's a good kid game and, uh, yeah. so, you know, it's kind of a scroller. It's fun. Right. Um, and by the way, there is an excellent FIFA uh, cup. I think it's called Brazil Now or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. app that you can snap to the side while you watch the World Cup games and it gives you real time oh, yeah. scores it has polling it's what they promised when they a, a year ago when they
first announced the Xbox One. Uh, right. And I love That's it. It's smart for soccer because it's so boring. It gives, it you, gives something you something to do. You can tweet, you can vote, <laughs> you can poll. Yeah. You don't really yeah. have to pay attention to the game. Yeah. Uh, we are minutes away from the last year's, I'm sorry, last World Cup's champion, Spain, being uh, eliminated in their second game. I didn't understand why Cup. that was important. I see. Okay. They, where they won it last time. Yep. And of I course, so the Netherlands had their revenge <laughs> in the first game, and now it looks like Chile is going to kick their butts with their beautiful hmm. Adidas sneakers. Sometimes, literally, it is soccer. It is soccer. Hmm. After all, um, PS4 sold Xbox, outsold Xbox One again, yet again. I think we've yeah, pretty much stopped reporting that statistic. That. It's uh, yeah. yeah. It's just, next, you like kicking them when they're down, Leo. It's just next it's, time they win. Why don't we announce it? How about that? Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you got a lot of emails, as I did. We were talking last time about people are very um, literal, angry about this. The literal angry. net. We were talking about yeah. the fact that the Connect consumes 10% yeah. of the CPU cycles when it's attached. Yeah. No, I, I, by the way, I, you must have missed my press conference. I had to issue a public <laughs> apology. For, you, um, my friend, are so yeah. wrong. I get a lot of um, uh, corrections in the form of I say something when all the information is not available, and then someone clarifies it, and then they write someone else writes back and says, you're a jackass because you didn't know about this. Right. Um, this is not a big deal, but, <laughs> you know, in, in the form of public apology, Microsoft, because of all of the misinformation out in the world, which, by the way, was thanks to Microsoft, uh, Microsoft actually published uh, an interview with someone from the Xbox team explaining how that 10% performance improvement works. And the way it works is that uh, using a new version of the XDK, which is the Xbox development kit, you can write new games or update existing games to not support part of the Connect's functionality. It's not all of the Connect. It's like the skel skeletal tracking part of Connect. You can turn that off. If you do, you'll get a 10% performance increase only in that game. Not in the whole console. You can't just unplug the Connect from the console to get 10% performance improvement. Um, and yeah, presumably you, uh, games that don't use Connect have already turned that off. Well, yeah, that's a good... Actually, I'm not sure about that because... I, I could be wrong about this. I, apparently, I'm wrong about everything. But I believe that to make a game for Xbox One, you have to support certain Connect features. And in that case, it would just be on at the oh, time. So oh, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me to see... It's kind of a requirement that they include Some these. games and apps updated to yeah. remove this huh. uh, f functionality if they don't need it. Um, it's not really clear. It's but probably a simple update. Yeah. Yeah. No, is that okay? is that enough, or do I, do I do people need to throw rocks? I in the think you need or? to get on your knees and beg forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> right. You have been a I mean, I'm really, naughty boy. Really, really sorry, because this was a <laughs> big deal for some people. Oh Sounds lord! Sincere. Oh lord! It's a big deal. Yeah, I got the email too. Ten percent. Ten percent. So, um, Microsoft did kind of a dumb thing. They've done it before. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm not clear this was Microsoft, but go on. Uh, this is the, the, the paid, the paid uh, bloggers, yeah. the paying bloggers to write about IE thing. This comes up, actually. this kind of thing comes up a lot with Microsoft, doesn't it? It does. But it's not always, it's not, it's not Microsoft, right? Isn't it like a marketing company? It was. So what was happened, a, Mary Jo? Yeah. Advocate marketing company called Social yeah. Chorus. Yeah. They, they started recruiting bloggers to write positive things about Internet Explorer and they offered to pay them by check. Yep. They unfortunately approached the wrong person, Michael Arrington. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> no. They they oh, they're so stupid. The oh, my so God, are they stupid. Of course, posted the note that they sent him and uh, God, so all stupid. hell broke loose basically after that. <sighs> So uh, I, I went to Microsoft and I said, wow, were you guys paying these guys to do this? And they said, you know what? This isn't the way we do things. And we've terminated that program immediately. And we're not continuing so, that. Didn't this, the they, interesting did this, thing this is same think, thing happened once before, though, or recently. Like, yes, it has. Yeah. Yep. So I actually was approached for something like this uh, for a different Microsoft product. Um, I think I told Mary Jo about it at the time. You did. Was it, it was, social course or no? What's that? Was it? Was oh, was it, it, the it oh, I'll have to look. I don't remember. I don't uh, know. Yeah. Um, it was not Microsoft. They were representing Microsoft. Um, I blew them off at first. They kept uh, bugging me about it. And so finally I was like, all right, explain to me, what is it that I have to do? And it was social media stuff. It was, you know, posting stuff on 
yeah. Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And they were gonna they were gonna pay me. And so I wrote back and I said, okay, then I said, here's the deal. I actually really like this Microsoft product. It's something I write about regularly. I wouldn't say that I promote it. I'm not like a, you know, I work for Microsoft, yeah. but I, I'm comfortable saying that it's a good product because I use it and I like it. Um, I cannot ethically be paid by a marketer to do this yeah. kind of stuff. So this isn't gonna work out. And I think I want to say the amount they were going to pay was like th maybe 3500 bucks. I'll have to look it up. But she wrote back and she said, Paul, so sorry about that. Uh, we can fix this. Uh, they've agreed to pay $5,000. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. like, okay. And I was like, oh. guys, I, you clearly did not listen Holy to anything I just wrote. I, I, I cannot ethically do this. Yeah. And uh, so I got something like this. I, I'll, I'll, I'll have to look that up. I don't remember... Well, this this would have wowed uh, Mike Harrington. It says, yeah. uh, uh, it says we like we love your aesthetic and your blogging mm -hmm. style, and we think you'd be the perfect partner to spread the word on the new Internet yeah. Explorer browsing style. <laughs> Compensation for this post is available, and there'll also be ample opportunities for fun prizes and rewards throughout the duration of the program. Uh, I would I would like fun prizes. I have to admit I think that would be so be much <laughs> fun. Why didn't they write to me? Yeah. This you know happens I, all. I get emails like this yeah. all the time from all kinds of people. I never. I, I don't know that I'd ever seen one like that before. That. Um, but my, I have to blame like, Microsoft <laughs> a little bit because they surely yeah. they 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 hired this company. Yeah, they yeah, they must have hired this company, right? Um, but you know, yeah. the thing I tried to point out when I wrote about this is you can have sponsored posts. There's nothing illegal about having sponsored posts on sites, but you should mark them oh, sure. when they're sponsored, right? right? And the what they were basically doing <coughs> was getting these folks to write things about IE and not mark that it was They sponsored. said you can't say that we're paying No, you? it didn't say that. It didn't say that. But if I went back and looked at a couple things where people had done them and used the hashtag, and it's oh, not boy. really clear that that was yeah, That's sponsored. highly I think Xbox One was part of this last year, I think. Was yeah, it? I believe so. I, I remember this. Yeah. I think that's what it was. And it was because the, the video bloggers right. at the time were not allowed to say that they were being paid which is actually illegal right that's exactly um, right paul i remember that story i think that's what it was yep. yeah yeah so. well it's good for you and me Ooh. and mary joe because <laughs> right. uh the comp the yeah. companies and the and the reporters and the and the press who you know kind of remain bloody minded and independent and don't take money <laughs> yeah oh no no but leo i love money <laughs> don't get me wrong uh, happy to accept money it's just you know I, but yeah. obviously it depends on uh, i i'm you know this is just it's unethical I, I this is contrary to everything that i stand for i i'm right. supposed to be you just gotta disclose and, this right yeah you gotta disclose it if you take it yeah and then people can know this. not to read you anymore I just could, uh, or you decide well, you that, know, hey i don't care that they did right uh, i'm going for the gold yeah. We, yeah we do sponsored things at work um yeah. and i i've done projects for toshiba but the reason I, and I don't, I mean, I don't, Toshiba doesn't pay me, but I mean, I don't, the reason I agreed to do that, those particular projects is because I actually really care about this topic. I, I say no to a lot of stuff because I'm just bored by it or, right. you know, I don't really feel strongly about it. But this, this whole notion of the relevance of PCs in this kind of mobile world is something I actually really care about. I love talking about that stuff. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of a different thing, but it's, I, you know, it's obviously it's sponsored in a sense, but it's sponsored because I'm independent and, and present, present it that way. Yeah. You know? Well, we have ads. We have sponsors. Yeah. yeah. We, do we just clearly uh, label them as sponsors and so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but you know what? But even that stuff is kind of, it's interesting because when you think about Audible, especially, but also uh, Squarespace, which is a service I use and I love and I wish I could use on my actual, you know, mainstream website, um, that's kind of like a win-win because I, I I love that we can have advertisers like those because I actually use that stuff and like it. I we try I to listen, do that. Yeah, I we, listen yeah. Audible every single day on yeah. my phone. Yeah, so, so that's, that's kind a, of a, a nice uh, kind of confluence. It's nice when it works out like that. Yeah, if it was laundry soap, that would be a little weird. Well, I'm always torn yeah. because on the one hand, I like to accept advertisers who are not technical. Naturebox.com slash twit. But then, because uh, that's not a conflict of interest because we don't cover the topic. Sure. Right. Um, but on the other hand, I do like to have sponsors for products uh, that we use all the time because th those are legitimate uh, endorsements. Those are those are things right. we like, like, say, Citrix ShareFile, which is a fabulous product for people who want right. to share files online, uh, don't want to attach emails. ShareFile well, is... 
I'm doing it. It really helps now, when Paul. it's good stuff, right? It does, I mean, it, it, no, but it, hey, Paul, I'm, but it helps hey, when this stuff is actually yeah. high quality. No. Well, I mean, that really well we, we actually turn down a lot of advertisers. We always say no to advertisers all the time. Every day, uh, I will say no to somebody. I just make it part of my ritual. Uh, we only accept advertisers for products we like. And we have a rule that I have to try it. If I've never tried it before, I'll take it home and I'll use it because I want to make sure that I can, you know. You know why? The real reason, besides the ethical reason, when I tell people to buy something, they blame me if it sucks. Oh, my, please. I, I, there's nothing more stressful than recommending a $2,000 laptop or whatever only to have someone come back and say, you know, you said that blah blah right. blah, and you know they, whatever. They don't blame they the company; they blame you. No, I mean, and no, but I take that seriously as well. That's a kind of a different topic in a way. But I mean, um, you know, people were bouncing out Surface Pro three reviews after having the device for two days. It's like, are you kidding me? Does does not does anyone not ever come back to you and call you on this? I mean, you know, you have to really, you have to really care about that. I mean, I, I don't understand how you couldn't. Yeah, I'm with you. You know. Well, let's talk about ShareFile, as long as we're here. And then we'll get the back of the book. Paul and Mary Jo, they got stuff to plug. Stuff you like, tips, beer, you know. None of which they're paid for. Fools. <laughs> That's right. It's just all stuff we like. Just stuff they like. <laughs> Fools. See? You see? You see what I'm saying? They just keep giving it away. All right. This is, uh, ShareFile is a really big solution to a problem in business. Um in almost every case, when you send a business email, it almost always seems like you want to attach something, an invoice, a presentation, images. Attachments are part of doing business, and yet you hear me and everybody, uh, security experts all the time say, don't, send, don't email attachments and don't open attachments when you get them in an email. It's how viruses get spread. I should also point out attachments are not secure. They're, it's like sending a postcard. Everybody can read it along the way. And finally, of course... Uh, nowadays, with the file sizes we're sending, these attachments often get bounced back, so you never even really send it. ShareFile solves all that. ShareFile allows you to share files uh, across the Internet. Citrix ShareFile is such a great program. Of course, it's from Citrix. These guys know business. I mean, you've heard, you know, you've heard and probably used Citrix in your business. Uh, instead of sending an email, you're going to send a secure link, SSAE 16 audited data centers, AES 256-bit encryption. Your stuff is private. So, so much so that it's compatible. It's HIPAA compliant. It follows regulations in the financial services industry and others. You, this really is a great solution. I want you to try it free. Visit sharefile.com and sign up for Citrix ShareFile. When you do, my, if you would do me a favor and do Paul and Mary Joe a favor, you're going to see a little, right at the fine print, right at the top of the screen. Where it says podcast listeners, click here. Would you do that one? Click that link. Not not the three other try it free buttons, but the little tiny one with the green microphone. And the reason is you can type in the offer code Windows, and then they'll know you heard it on Windows Weekly. You should also pick your industries because they'll customize it for the industry. They're for a huge number of industries, they support automatically. Event planning, financial, food service, government, graphics, media, marketing, nonprofit, photography. I use it to share photos. I use Citrix ShareFile all the time because, uh, I, because I have it, and it's just great. It's really convenient. Try it today. 30 days free. ShareFile.com. Use the offer code Windows. Citrix ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with Citrix ShareFile. And now Paul Thorot will kick things off in the back of the book. So I skipped the tip this week because I have so many software picks. Okay. It seems to be a trend recently. Fair I'm not enough. sure what's happening. Yeah. Actually, I have a, <laughs> there's, a, there's a very important one that's not on the list because it just happened. But uh, Microsoft has released Skype 4.3 for Linux. Woo! So, uh, <laughs> you know, you can get that. Yeah, they're now. catching up. Pretty soon they'll be right where we are. <laughs> Um, Microsoft, I don't know why I constructed the link this way, but uh, Microsoft has also launched something called the IE Developer Channel, which will be familiar sounding if you're used to the Chrome Dev Channel. You know, Chrome has, uh, I guess, four channels like Stable, Beta, uh, Developer, and one other. But um, this is basically a second install of IE that you can put on Windows 8. Uh, I think it's 8.1 or Windows 7 with Service Pack 1. 
Uh, it's the desktop version of the browser only, but it runs alongside the existing IE version, which is actually kind of a neat feature. It's also a full feature browser, so it's not like a stripped down developer version that only has the new stuff. But it gives developers a chance to try out the features that are coming in a future IE update or version today. And so it's kind of a neat idea. So if you're a web developer, um, you should check that out. Very There's nice. some neat stuff in there, like you know, gamepad API support, um, better uh, WebG, uh, WebGL performance, a lot of good you know game type stuff, especially. So that's cool. Um, Facebook beta uh, for Windows 8.0 and 8.1 was updated this week. Uh, major UI changes. It's uh, flatter than ever, which I didn't think was possible on Windows Phone, <laughs> but it is. Um, Even this is a hard thing to explain. Uh, if you use a Facebook app on uh, Android or uh, iOS, you know that there are, depending on the view, there's a toolbar at the top and the toolbar at the bottom. And one of the toolbars has your, you know, check in, um, post something, post some photos. And the other one has like the site parts, you know, so you can go to timeline, you can go to notifications, you can go to messages, etc. Um, on Windows Phone, the normal version of this app, those two apps are, are toolbars are right next to each other at the top for some reason. So now they've made it sort of like how it is on Android and iOS, where one's at the top, one's at the bottom. The weird thing is, <laughs> they're reversed. So if you're used to Android or iOS, the things that are on the top there are on the bottom on Windows Phone, and the things that are on the bottom are on the top. I don't know why, but... Um, there are other improvements in the app that are worthwhile. Uh, for example, if you're commenting on a photo, the way it worked in Windows Phone before is the comment screen would come up full screen. Now it comes up about three quarters of the screen, and you can still see the photos so you, you know, while you're doing your comments, which I think is what most people want, and some other stuff like that. So uh, Facebook beta can run alongside normal Facebook. You can fully integrate into the phone in Windows 8.1 using that new, new social extensibility framework. Um, you, When you do a share from any other app, you can share to Facebook or to Facebook beta, so you can mix and match. You can run both side by side. It, it works fine. And so um, I haven't done a lot on Facebook this week, but since it came out, it seems to be running pretty good. Uh, da, 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 da. Skype for iPhone was updated this week as well. Um, this, you know, the, Skype, the guys at Skype are trying to make their mobile apps all look kind of the same. And the way they're looking the same, oddly enough, is it looks like a Windows phone app. And so I think we might have talked about this last week, but it came out soon thereafter if we did. Um, so the new version of Skype for iPhone looks like Skype for Windows Phone. So, neat, <laughs> I guess. But it's, you know, more consistent with the other Skype mobile apps. And the other one, and this one's kind of interesting. You may remember that some couple of months ago, I've been uh, disenchanted with the whole Amazon Kindle stuff because they're not updating their app on Windows or Windows Phone at all. They're not releasing other apps on Windows or Windows Phone at all, including like the uh, Amazon Music app. And, um, I'm, or, you know, I'm kind of bothered by that stuff. So I recommended uh, the Barnes & Noble Nook app. And then the next day they announced they were canceling it. Um, they also that. never came out times, with their... Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a good... We had a good one-day run. Um, I mean, the app's still there. If you have a Windows tablet, you can still use the Nook app, subscribe to magazines, it all works. It's fine. Uh, but I don't think they're ever going to update it again. And of course, the Windows phone version isn't happening. And we're in kind of a weird limbo because we think Microsoft's coming out with a reader app that's going to be compatible. It's never happened. We don't know. So, um, so here we are. Um, you know, I, I read a lot of books on Kindle, but I have to use non-Windows devices because the, the, the Kindle software on, on Windows and Windows Phone is so awful. Um, this week, Kobo Books, which is, um, they're not based in the United States. I'm not actually sure where they're from. I don't know if they're Japanese or Canadian or some <laughs> one of those other crazy countries out there in the world. <laughs> it's not, not the United States. <laughs> what if, what if Chilean? Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they released a Windows Phone app. Now, they already have a Windows 8 app, and, and because of the phone, I looked into them, and they actually have an app on everything. They're on iPhone, they're on uh, iPad, they're on Android, they're on the Mac, they're on the PC desktop. They're on BlackBerry 10, which is kind of crazy. Um, and they have a reasonably sized uh, store. They have magazines. Um, the magazines don't work on the phone version, which is too bad, because they do work on the iPhone version, which I find to be a little irritating. But... Um, they promised that they're going to update fairly regularly. They have done so on the Windows side. Um, it's a nice looking app. It works well, performs well. Um, it's about on par with the Kindle today. I, it obviously needs to go further. And if you look at the iPhone version, which I did, there's a lot more stuff in that app than we see on the Windows phone side. But I'm not ready to say I'm you know, abandoning Kindle and running off to Kobo. But I'm, you know, I'm going to look at it. And I bought a couple of books, um, bought a couple of magazines. I'm going to try it on tablets. I'm going to try it on the phone and we'll see how that goes. But it's free. I mean, it's it, and they have a lot of free books as well. It's something uh, to take a look at if you're a reader. 
It looks like Toronto. That's everything. Is what Toronto. What's that? Toronto? Toronto. 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 Toronto, Canada. Yep. I think that's so. still part of Canada, right? I've heard it in. Yeah. As far as I've heard, it's still it's right part near of Chile. Canada. Oh no, that's Chicago. It's near, it's near Japan. <laughs> near Japan. Yeah, it sounds like Japan, right? Yeah, Kobo. Bush. Kobo, yeah. You know the fa the new Facebook app. I mean, I always got the feeling on Windows Phone that Facebook app was really a wrapper almost for the website. You know. No, it's it, it, it used to have a behind. very cool. It had a, it's always been behind. So. Uh, the first version was developed from Microsoft by an outside company whose name I now forget. It, wasn't it had a very Facebook. cool, not Facebook. No. Um, it had kind of a metro look and feel. Mm -hmm. It was neat. Uh, at some point, Facebook demanded that all their mobile apps have this <laughs> consistent look and feel, kind of like color. Skype. Yeah. yeah. So they switched it, and uh, Microsoft still develops it, but uh, they oh, supposedly are working Microsoft. with Facebook on it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what's going on there. I like it. I, the new one, to me, I don't know if you've used it, Mary Jo, it seems fine. No, I have not. I'll try it tonight. Do yeah. I have to go into the store and look for the beta? It's not an update. Yeah, look for Facebook beta. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, you can run it side by side so it doesn't blow anything away or, yeah, you, you know, you don't have to replace anything. Well, here's some good news. Mary Jo Foley can tell us how we can have an Azure pack. <laughs> so that's, sounds like a medical condition. I got an Azure pack yes. and I'm all up and down You'll my have side. have it removed this weekend. Yeah. I'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> what is an no, Azure pack? No. Windows Azure pack, WAP. Well, a, that's a much, much better pack. name. Much better. Although now I guess it's probably called Azure pack since they don't call it Windows Azure anymore. Um, so Azure pack is a collection of services that Microsoft makes available to partners and very big enterprise customers uh, that comes from Azure and that they can deploy in their own data centers to make them run more like Azure actually runs. And so you know the way that Microsoft now has user voice and they're letting people have input into what's what they want to see on Xbox and what they want to see on Windows and Windows Phone? Well, they're actually doing this now too on some of these enterprise products. So if you do a search on Azure Pack and Feedback, you'll find a site where Microsoft is soliciting user feedback for what they want to see in Azure Pack. And there's about, I think there's probably like, um, I don't know, maybe two dozen li features listed so far. Number one requested feature is role-based access control. But you can go in there and you can say, how, how, do you, how would you like Microsoft to prioritize uh, the next set of features that they add to Azure Pack? You can vote on the ones that are there, just like, just like user voice. And you can add your own ideas about what you'd like to see and why. So if you are an Azure Pack user or somebody who's thinking about trying it out, you might want to go check this site out and see what might be in the next set of updates based on user demand. Awesome. Hi. How do you like that enterprise pick? Eh, Azure Pack. <laughs> Azure Pack. It's better than an impacted Azure. <laughs> Ooh, an yes, impacted Azure sounds sound painful, good. yeah. It does. And our code name pick of the week? Codename pick of the week, for once, is not a place name or a color. It's Catapult. And this is a very interesting thing uh, because a lot of times people think Microsoft research projects take forever to ever end up in implemented products or services at Microsoft. This is an example of one that isn't taking forever. Um, and the people at Microsoft research were working around how you could take Field programmable gate arrays, which are chips that you can program. FCGPAs, BGCZs, yes. <laughs> programmable. FP, FPG, FPGAs. Field, FPPGAs. Field programmable gate, gate arrays. Gate yeah. arrays. Yeah. Good wow. Yeah. Yeah. They they took these. They built a hardware software fabric to run on top of them, and they said, "Hey, you know what? This is crazy, but let us try running some of Bing on this to see how this goes." And Chi Lu, who runs Bing, gave them the green light. So they deployed this with 116, I mean, I'm sorry, 1,600 Microsoft servers in their data center to try running Bing. And they it turned out that it runs Bing faster. It runs it more efficiently. So you, they could technically have half the number of servers running the same workload. So uh, very uh, energy efficient as well. And they, it turned out so well that they're going to actually let them do this. And it's going to roll out next year in Microsoft's data center. So Catapult's the name of the hardware software fabric that the Microsoft researchers came up with in trying to solve the problem about how to make servers uh, run better. You know, because they, Microsoft's very worried about the end of Moore's law. And, you know, what are we going to do when that happens? How are we going to continue to get... Uh, 
real performance out of hardware. We can't just keep adding servers and servers and servers and expect our performance is going to automatically double and triple because it's not. So this is their start, a start of their solution to this. And it's very interesting. Cool. There's a research paper. You can go download it, check it out if you're really interested in this. And I, I mean, there's no reason that maybe at some point users couldn't deploy this in their own data centers as well. You know, Mary Jo, this is my Friday. Nice. <laughs> Maybe you didn't know that, but Thursday and I Friday, this must be a time I, zone yeah. thing. This is this is <laughs> yeah. I live in a very very different time zone. <laughs> I don't understand do. much. No, my work because <laughs> I have to work the weekends for the radio show, so I have Thursday yeah. and Friday off. So Wednesday is my Friday, and you know, gosh, it's almost the sun's over the yard arm back where you live. Maybe yep. there's a beer I could find that would help me ease my way into the the weekend. <laughs> oh, I'm yes, sure there I have is. something to suggest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what? Okay, is it my named Calibre? Name. No, but not Calibre, <laughs> but it's Colorado Vixnu. So if you heard that name, you might think, wow, a cool beer from Colorado. This beer is from Brazil. And it's the brewery's name is Colorado. So, of course, because of the World Cup, Paul's favorite sporting event, I had to pick a World <laughs> Cup beer. And it also, because Paul loves double IPAs, because they're so, so hoppy and Just awesome, I picked a thousand here. as well. Yeah, <laughs> but actually, Paul, if you ever got to try this, and believe it or not, this beer was on tap at Rattle and Hum this week for the World Cup, it's a beer I from Brazil. It. Um, they, It's not as hoppy as one might expect. It's it's very, very malty, in fact, even though it's a double IPA. So it's a balanced beer. They sell it in bottles. It's actually on tap at some places around, even the U.S., or if you're in Brazil. There is a Calibre it. beer. Is there really? Yeah. <laughs> Just, of just so you know, chat room. Where's thank it from? you. Uh, it's uh, Calibre, Queensland, <laughs> Australia, uh, New Zealand, uh -huh. or Australia? No, Australia. Queensland is Australia. Calibre. They probably Good don't pronounce know. it that or way. Or when either. we go there sometime. Yes, let's all go now. Yeah, let's go now. So yeah, if you ever get to try this beer, the Colorado Vixnu, very nice. Good double IPA. It's but it's it's ironic because it's from Brazil. I know. Crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I was just about to say, oh, good. I love Colorado. All the great beers come from Colorado. Then I realized, wait a minute. Uh, no, nope. It's Brazil. Yeah. Pretty cool. Cerv Cervajaria. I guess that's uh, how they say. So this is what they're drinking in the World Cup right now. Yeah, probably. You know so. who's not drinking? Spain. Spain. They're not. Eliminated. Or maybe they are. Maybe they are Actually, drinking. Actually, that's all they're doing right now. That's yeah. right. Wow, yeah. so uh, that's that's a kind of a shocker because they won it last time. Yeah, it went all the way. I have no opinion time. about that, but I have to say <laughs> I am slightly overjoyed that Miami didn't win another NBA championship. There you go. You're a Spurs <laughs> fan. Well, I'm a fan of like good team basketball, so the Spurs are interesting yeah. along that yeah. line. How about direction. the Kings? You like them? I, that one, I didn't have any. You know, if uh, it's if it's not the Bruins, who cares? Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't say it. Yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly how you say it. <laughs> if yeah, it ain't actually, the Bruins. That's a fine way to say screw it. Screw them. <laughs> <laughs> screw those guys. Uh, Mary Jo Foley, is it all about Microsoft.com, the fabulous ZDNet blog where she writes all about Microsoft really pretty much 24-7. She has no life, but boy, thanks to her, we've got a great <laughs> You know, updates and all the Microsoft news. Paul Therat is at the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com, where he is available to write articles about Internet Explorer or any. <laughs> for a price. That's right. For a <laughs> anything you'd like to sponsor, we're pretty much here. No, just kidding. Uh, just kidding. I can't believe they went to Michael Arrington, of all the people. Oh, man. I know. It couldn't have been worse, really. Kara Swisher would be the only person worse. Yeah, sure. 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 Because she's actually more scary than I don't than know like that Aaron. she could even construct a blog post. So. <laughs> <laughs> Burn! Uh, we do this show. Normally, we are a little delayed, and I apologize for that because of the Amazon announcement. Yeah, but normally, we're a little delayed. It's tomorrow. It is tomorrow. We're doing. We're now on Friday. Uh, <laughs> the cats are freaking out. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> what? Paul, the sun's gone down. Uh, we do this show 11 a.m. Pacific. That's 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC on Wednesdays. If you watch live, I appreciate it because, we, you know, we love seeing you here and we take your feedback and all that stuff. But if you can't watch live on demand, audio and video is always available after the fact at twit.tv slash WW or wherever uh, finer podcasts are aggregated, including the Xbox uh, music place thing. Good thing I'm a jiggy. Uh, don't forget Paul's new book. 
Is it like a or just a rewrite of the of the old yeah, it's, book? It's just a rewrite. <laughs> the windows. <laughs> I, it, I, I will write part of it tonight while I'm doing something else. It's so, yeah, it's so it's easy. easy. I, I'm He's so, he can now write so, books in his so sleep. Stupid. Yeah. The Windows Phone 81 Field Guide. You'll find it at windowsphonebook.com. You that can download great. the first edition. Help Paul write it. That's cool. Yeah, please, could you? That's that would cool. be great. Yeah. <laughs> then he'll publish it in Calibre. We could all lose money together. It'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to spread the lack of wealth. I blame Amazon. Um, when I write a book, every expense is spared. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, we'll see you. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye, guys.